I have a baby. So this is a human baby right here. <laughs> a bit high, a bit high to the camera. This is a human baby. You see? Ta da! John Hill got a baby now. How what does up? it feel? 111 family. If you guys want to see me skate, see me be around other skaters and just the vlogs and stuff like that, music, etc. I got a new vlog channel. It's going to be called The Most Beautiful Day. Link is in the description. Everybody follow that right now. I'm going to be posting a lot on there. And it's just going to be, you know, authentic, cool stuff. Just chill, skateboarding, showing the music. Everything I just said earlier, I don't know why I'm repeating myself, but y'all do that and enjoy this video. 111. Let's get that to a thousand subscribers today. 111, welcome to the Beautiful Day Podcast. My bad, y'all ain't posting in like, what, 13 days, 14 days? Slacking. Yeah, I've been stressing the fuck out. I was like, let me take a little break. These are a lot to do. I've been traveling. Like, how long did it take me to set up for this one? I mean, it takes like 20 minutes, but why are you stressing? I've just been stressing in life, bro. Really? Yeah, it's my therapist now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to hear about it, honestly, on this podcast. I've been stressing just a little shit. You know you know, you know how that shit go. Working, yeah, yeah. Working hard, oh, doing same. the fucking most. Like, all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can only imagine what you're stressing off right now, too. Oh, we got, yeah, yeah. We gonna talk I was going to ask you about that, too. Yeah, because yeah. you, you've, been, you've been doing this for a long time. Oh, my God. Yeah, we'll speak on that for <laughs> okay, sure. Okay. But as y'all can see, we got John Hill in the building. What up? What up? How long has it been since we've seen each other? It's been a long... Was it since our podcast? Because if it was since our podcast, that was like five, six years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. I did a podcast with him, y'all. Yeah. I always feel like I, when I see him, too, I'm always like, oh, what up? Yeah. Like, I'm just like normal, like, oh, what up, what up? I was telling him then, earlier, it was like, I feel like I saw you yesterday. Yeah, yeah, and then we talk, and I'm like, damn, it's been five years. I mean, that's cool, though. I mean, it's, we were so engrossed in the same scene, and we've always been, like, right around each other all the yeah. time that it's like, but that's my fault. I'm the one who's, like, never, I mean, you, you hit up everyone. I think that's the reason you got this podcast. You're like, I want to be friends with everyone again. Yeah, I mean, me, I'm, I'm like, like, what's going on, y'all? Let's talk. Yeah, <laughs> I'm <laughs> always slacking, dude. And you're good, too, because you're, like, coming. Should we wait for this guy? No. All right. Again, we got the pot. I mean, uh, I the engineer yeah, yeah. right there. You know, because he was worried about the audio <laughs> and shit. I was like, bro, yeah, we got yeah. the magical guy over there. Pause. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> yeah. So the airplanes ain't gonna really matter. Y'all probably not even go here like that. But all right, I got a bunch of questions for you. All right. Um, and you can ask me whatever too, since we okay. ain't seen each other for a minute. Yep. Um, again, this ain't the professional podcast, so I only got like an hour and a half worth of memory. Okay. <laughs> so that's fine. All right. gotta yeah, be yeah, mindful that's fine. on that. That's fine. But um, first question. Typical ass question. All right. Where are you from? I'm from South Carolina. Okay. Columbia, South Carolina, the deep south. It's basically like Alabama and Mississippi and then South Carolina. It's not as famous as those two, but it's the same vibe. Yeah? Yeah, Is yeah. it boring as fuck out there? Dude, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> how do I, you know, it's funny. I always try to explain South Carolina. I always feel bad because I'm like, I feel like when you're from a place like that, you want to gas it up a lot and be like, yo, I'm from South Carolina. Hey, my people out there in South Carolina. <laughs> But like I didn't get I didn't get along with South Carolina. Like it's, it sounds like a racist area. Not no offense, people. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, dude. I mean, every like, when the news breaks out, every time it's always like in South Carolina, like <laughs> this crazy thing happened. And like it was funny. I was watching this documentary. This is fucked up. This isn't funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. Probably because we had a few drinks already. But like I was watching this documentary about the KKK, yeah. and I'm like, these dudes are kind of assholes. Well, yeah. I don't know if you know they're they're kind of rude, and like. It kept going, it kept going, and at the very end, they were like, all right, it was like the final fight. They're like, all right, we're about to go do this uh, this big talk at the state house, oh, and then no. the Black Panther showed up, and they're like, Black Panther's like, we're going to take up the other side. So, like, literally, they were going to occupy two sides of the state house, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, why does that look so familiar? And I'm like, yo, that's my state house. Oh, it, was like, it was like five minutes from my house. <laughs> KKK shows up, Black Panther, and I'm watching it, like, in California, and I'm like, fuck, and I just turned it off. I can't even, like, <laughs> like, so, like, I don't know. I feel like it's growing really fast and soon it's going to be like, but North Carolina is the one that gets all the love. Yeah. South Carolina just like, it's just got too many old racists. Yeah. But, but the young, the people my age and like younger, they're, they're trying their best to like make it cool. It's just, that's why I moved to California. Yeah. You have to get out of there, bro. Yeah. 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 You think if you stayed out there, you would have made it so far. This no, far not, no, I mean, dude, <laughs> no, like it's a really tough place for dreamers to live. And, and plus there's no money in South Carolina. So everyone out there, just, they don't feel like they can, do anything besides like work jobs and all that stuff but like or work like the normal jobs like like i don't know for me the second i saw youtube and stuff i was like i gotta be somewhere else where i can make a living doing something that's kind of i never even thought that was possible until i met like birdhouse i mean this is a whole thing but yeah, like we'll get there we yeah yeah, yeah. On yeah when i when i met when i met people like in california and like one of my friends sorry i'm gonna go all over the place no with this. keep going bro i'm one gonna of my, look at the computer because i'm checking on in, the audio in south too. carolina we we always had we always wanted someone out there to get to California and do something. That was like the big goal of Columbia. Like we, we have no pros from South Carolina except for one, I think. His name is Jack Sabak. And, uh, Jack Sabak? Yeah, he's a legend though. He's, he skates for like Static and like 
theories of Atlantis companies and stuff, but yeah. he was a legend. And we kept having dudes show up. Like we had one dude go out. He fell down a hill because he was doing drugs and drinking. Boom, busted his head. Done. Next dude. He died? He didn't die. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. no. He, was, he was good. Honestly, okay. He didn't die, but he did. He fucked himself up. Uh, like almost fine. permanently a little bit, you know? So he, he was still cool, but like he quit skating and stuff. And he tried to do California. Like that's the thing. Everyone who went out to California, they, they would like get heavy into the scene because it was so anxiety inducing because we're from this tiny town and now we got to deal with the best skaters in the world. Yeah. So we had one other dude who was like my first bully. Now we're friends, but he came out here and we're like, he's going to do it. Like he got on zero and he was killing it. Like he was getting, Why was he your bully though? He was just like, okay. So he was a raging alcoholic, did okay. crazy drugs. So he would like, Damn. I mean, I shouldn't, I'm not gonna get into detail about this dude. Cause if he watches this, I love this guy now, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he would just, it's, it's what it was. It's though. funny. Cause he, he would be mean to me, but like we'd be together and he'd be like, calling me like, you know, the F word that you yeah. call gay people or whatever. He'd be calling, like, he'd be in my face, like, eh, yeah, yeah. and then he'd be drunk, <laughs> running around. And then he, like, he, he just thought I was, like, cocky, I think, because I didn't know how to act. So I would just be like, uh, I'd laugh. And he'd be like, bro, you're cocky. But anyways, but he was just drunk. So he would just call me a f I mean, oh, I shouldn't say the word. How you gonna call me the F word? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then go call me cocky. No, that, that's, that's the thing. He would, like, but the thing is, like, I could see a twinkle in his eyes sometimes where, like, underneath all the intoxication, I could tell he kind of liked me. Like, mm. he had this weird thing where he liked the fact that I worked hard, that I skated. And it was weird. I had two bullies in Columbia, and they were the best skaters in Columbia. And, like, we all three were kind of the same, but we mm. all hated each other. And I think that we, th we saw each other's competition. But, like, we should have just been friends. But, anyways, this dude came out to California, and he was crushing. He was on zero. He was, like, working at the warehouse. He was killing it. He was about to get on the team and all this stuff. But then his alcohol caught up, the drugs caught up, and he just, like you know, whatever. And then Damn. he had to move back home. And like, he, he wrote out that alcoholism for a while. And now he's sober and he's crushing it. That's good. But like, it's real good. when I saw that dude come back, I was like, someone's got to do this. Someone's got to try it. Someone's got to do it. And that's when I, I felt like this crazy thing of, I was like, I, I think I could do it. I yeah. think, bro, I think I could do this. So that, then I got all hyped and anyways, now you be here. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's fucking yeah. Fire. yeah, yeah. Uh, besides dealing with bully ass niggas and racism <laughs> out there um what else was how, how else was it out there growing up i don't know you know if i'm gonna be honest yeah, it was kind of tough it was for me i don't think i don't know if it's the toughest place for people to live but for me it was super tough i think it's just a tough place for dreamers i kind of mentioned that earlier mm. but like you know you grow up and you kind of stand out and like it's funny it's so, dude, the difference, I, I, I want California people to know how different it is being from like a deep south or any other place really. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, New York might be close, you know, kind of the same vibes or whatever, same diversity. But when you're in the deep south, it's all like, you know, it's very traditional. It's the Bible Belt. Everyone oh, believes shit. in one thing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, for me, I was always cool with it. But, you know, every day it's like, where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? And I'm like, and I would be nice about it. Like, I'm from here. My mom's Korean though. My dad's, you know, whatever. And I say all this because I think it's funny in California, I've never been asked once. In California, I just look like I'm American. Because everybody mixed up. Everyone here. Everybody looks like something. me. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. everyone looks exactly like me out here. Everyone like uh, everyone's that. beige, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like everyone's like some mixed like I don't know, no one's white here. When mm. I see a white person in California, I'm like, oh that's you know, like you know, they're like the uh they're the minority. Minorities. Here. There's only 25%. Meth is a minority. We always call them a minority of the group. That's yeah. the nigga who engineers this shit, y'all. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Like, in California, you're the minority, and it's so weird growing up. And when I was there, people thought I was from here. People thought I was from Hawaii. People thought I was from whatever, Korea. I thought you were from Hawaii this whole time, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Because I kind of look like Jason Park. And even Jason Park's wife, she's Korean. And she was like, except Jason Park, dude, I love Jason. He likes this kind of stuff. His eyes are so tiny uh, but, that you can't see his pupils. <laughs> There's like, I don't know, there's this Brett, there's this Brett video, Brett yeah. Novak zooms into his face and I'm like, his eyes are closed. <laughs> it's the funniest fucking shot. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Damn. I it's, tried to get him on a podcast. He didn't want to do it. Really? Yeah. He didn't. Because he of that, thought whole, that whole Jeff shit. Oh, he probably yeah. thought you were going to come straight at him with the nah, Jeff but we, thing. We saw him in uh, Arizona at the Happy Medium premiere. Oh, no Everything way. Everything went cool and shit. Dude, yeah. that would have been sick if I went there. Because yeah. I went to the Happy Medium 2 premiere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean... All that being said, I, I found a good group of friends in South Carolina and, and they were the best. Like they were the best people. And then like, you know, each time people would drop out, I'd find another crew of people who had skated. And I was like, I was always finding crews who skated and that was really, really good. Um, good. So the skating there was amazing. The guy who owned the skate shop was the best dude ever. Um, but it was just like deep South traditional values. And I, I could feel myself trying to like think of things differently. I'm like, okay, well, 
what about the other side? What are they thinking? You know, what about, and then that's when like people had a hard time. My family had a hard time, you know, like in South Carolina, when my mom showed up, people had a hard time with that. They were just like, Damn. what's, the, what is this thing? You know? And it's All like, right. it's just, I don't know. It's, it's weird, but like, yeah, I mean, so, so in that environment, I was just like, this is cool. I get it. I'm super down with people, but like, there's a place where I think I feel more accepted or where I and more a part of the community and nobody's going to be asking me like, yo, what are you? And I'm yeah. like, um, you know, now here it's, it's perfect. I don't know. Damn. So you damn near a nigga, bro. You just <laughs> like us. <laughs> it's, it's funny though. In South Carolina, there's like, it's like 30% black, 69% white and then like 1% everything else. Oh, but man. there's a lot of black people in South Carolina. I, I think it's cause it's, it's like the deep South. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like fu- kind of fucked up why they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you get into skateboarding Dan out there? Tony Hawk's first skater. Everyone says that. Like, Everybody I fucking know. says it, bro. I'm going to keeping an account. I know. <laughs> I, it's funny. I was watching your podcast and then I saw like a uh, Gary Rogers talking about it. Dude, that game, man. Like <laughs> I remember like the moment I played it. Cause it was like, I dude at like eight years old, I was like, fuck life. I don't get this. I was eight? like, I don't get this. I literally was like, this is corny. I literally thought like existence was corny. Humanity Damn. was corny. I was just like, this is lame. You was woke. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then when I was uh, when I was eight, Pokemon came out and I was like, damn, mm-hmm. this is cool. What's this? Mm-hmm. And it was mm-hmm. like, it basically, everything that made the world seem bigger got me excited. So like Pokemon was like, there's a bigger world out there. This is some Asian culture, whatever, but also it's a game where it's an explored yeah. world. And I don't know, it just made the world seem bigger. I'm like, this is awesome. So I, I remember that. like at school, I brought in a presentation and I brought all Pokemon shit. Cause it was like, bring stuff that, that is meaningful to you. So I brought all Pokemon shit. I'm like, Da-da-da. the next year I'm like nine or 10 or whatever. And I brought in all skateboarding shit. Cause like when I played Tony Hawk's, I remember playing the game yeah. and I was just staring at the screen and like the music playing. It was like, so here I am doing every And like yes. that song, first <laughs> of all, the gameplay, whatever me and the homies, I was like, do we found it? Like we found the, the golden ticket. And like, I got so hooked on Tony Hawk's first And I remember like telling my friends, I'm like, and that was the first thing I asked my parents for ever. So like I, I w- went inside and I'm like, you know, cause like, you don't want to ask for stuff in, in like a South Carolina environment. You don't want to ask for stuff. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, parents yeah. are working hard. You let them do what they got to do. But I, I went up to them and I'm like, I think I, I think I want a skateboard. And I remember like the way they looked at me because it's the first time I asked for anything. They were like, <laughs> yeah. Cause they, they, they were like, excited? yeah, they were like, That's yo, cool. you should ask for stuff. You're a kid. Man. And I remember like, they were like, I feel like they were damn near crying thinking like, <laughs> he's finally asking like, That's cause, amazing. cause, cause I was like, a, I think they were annoyed by the fact that I was always like, nah, do you? Yeah, and they're yeah, like, yeah. You're a kid. Ask for shit. So we're trying to be a parent. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to do the thing. <laughs> so when they bought my skateboard from Walmart, it was like forty bucks, which is crazy. Now they're fifteen. They're, they're fifteen now. now? Yeah, yeah. Oh that, shit! I thought it'd be more expensive to be honest. That's what you think. Yeah. That, I feel like that's how bad skateboarding is doing. You're Fuck. like, damn. It's, it went from forty to fifteen, but like, yeah, I got the mongoose skateboard, and I was just like, I was hooked to it. And then the next day, I got my neighbor into it. A week later, I got six other kids into it. Like in like two weeks, we had a crew, and we were just like. That's what we did for the next 10 years, you know? Fuck, yeah, yeah, that's dope. fucking amazing. It was dope. Yeah, and that I, game, like, yeah, I got all credit to the game, you yeah. know? <laughs> well, everybody is, re- which one was your favorite, though? Probably the probably the second one, but I'm not going to lie, I really like Underground. <laughs> everybody said Underground. It's Underground 2. Underground 2? That's, I like Underground but what, 2. What, wait, Eric, the bad guy, he's in the first one, right? Apparently. I can't remember the storyline. The helicopter, when you go over the helicopter and Thanks, Eric uh, takes the credit from you. I just like, I don't know why I liked Underground too a lot. Y'all comment below which which Tony Hawk Pro Skater game y'all like the Did most. Did your chin just itch just now? No, I just always do that when I talk. I like I like over the mic. Yeah, I'm just like, me. Yeah, 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 I do that. Yeah, too, like, over the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hella hella dramatic and shit. Um, yeah, yeah. So, shit. As a skateboarder out there, yeah. what were some struggles growing up skating? I mean, it, the the skate scene didn't really exist. We had like the local crew. Um, yeah. Dude, I have a good story actually about when I when I got on the local skate company. Um, so it was Blue Tile Skate Shop. It's actually a legendary skate shop today. Like okay. a lot of people really really fuck with Blue Tile, and even out here, people always talk about like that skate shop and Dave Tool. And it was one of the last surviving skate shops like of the East Coast, you know. Mm. And it happened to be in South Carolina. But like the dude worked really hard. His name's Dave Tool. He worked really hard at building the community all the time. Um, but like the skate community itself. I had me and my friends and we just went out every day. We didn't even think about what the skate community was like, right? Okay. We just skated every day. We filmed. We saw Yeah Right every day. So we would just yeah. watch Yeah Right and then try to go do the same shit. You know, we'd like watch it, film skating, all that stuff. Hell yeah. And then I started going to the skate shop and I remember my brother actually knew the guy because my brother's older um, and he was friends with his friends, whatever. But he was like, yo, this is my little brother, John. He wants to be a skater. He didn't care. He was just like, all right, cool, whatever. <laughs> and then I got on the local skate shop 
um, other than that one, there was a surf shop, yeah. and I got on that one. And surf shop, it's like it's not the skate shop, you know, it's not they the core. skateboards and shit. Yeah, it's not the core skate yeah. shop. Anyways, I remember just just an answer to my brother because I feel like he'll one day he's gonna watch one of these and he's yeah. gonna want to feel good. He was older. He was getting paid like pretty good money because he. This is kind of fucked up, but he got brain cancer. He's good oh, now. Fuck. But he's good though. He's good now. Damn. But when he was 18, he joined the military, got brain cancer. But since he got brain cancer in the military, they had to pay him for the rest of his life for getting that. So yeah, they because they they consider it their fault if you get sick in the military. Oh shit. So with him, he was an 18 year old kid, and they're like, "Hey, we'll pay you for the rest of your life." And he's like, "Sick." So he came up to me. And he was like, hey, man, like I'm friends with Dave at the skate shop. You're on that other company. He goes, if you quit that skate shop right now, I'll buy you four skateboards, four decks. And I was like, and so I was just like, <laughs> all right. And like by that point, I was actually kind of good. Mm. And it's so funny because like even in my videos, I think people make fun of me because I'm like, I don't know skate parts. Like I don't know durometer, wheel shit, truck shit. I don't know any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've always been that way. So when I, when I went to the skate shop, I'm like, hey, I'm getting four decks today. And they're like, Damn. I was like, I'll take a 775 and 8 and 825 and 85. Yeah, I was just like, I was like, I don't know. And like I was kind of good. What the fuck? That's crazy. Yeah. Imagine that point of view too, just a kid. Like, I want four skateboards. Dude, he was tripped. And like the guy <laughs> working, he must have thought I was like the most spoiled. But I was yeah. I was spoiled because my brother was hooking me up and I was like, yeah, I'll take it. So um I quit the skate shop, got on that, and then I just started desperately trying to get on this local skate shop. Um, and then out of nowhere, the guy who owned the skate shop was like, guys we're doing a b team like we have the a team it's the best skaters in columbia okay. we're gonna do a b team and it's all like the kids coming up mm -hmm. so we hooked up me and like 10 other kids um but he started selling us 20 dollars skateboards and that's when like i could really really go for it because then mm -hmm. i was like okay i can get a new deck yeah, yeah, yeah. um Which really and, matters that shit really matters oh, i think <laughs> i think people if you're coming up in skating you don't have money the struggle of like the decks is the hardest part and yeah. shoes yeah. um but like at the local skate park and the skate shop i would just go through the trash cans i'd find skateboards i'm taking them that, that's it so that's how i got through with skate shoes and uh skateboards you were digging the trash cans and get them i would get them oh, that's that's i did not know you was doing that that's yeah the struggle yeah it's crazy yeah i mean at the time <laughs> it was like i didn't want to it's I had a whole situation. My parents weren't even, it was crazy. Yeah. I can't get super into it, but they, they were living somewhere else at a certain point, yeah. you know? So I was just like kind of trying to get it on my own or whatever. But and the um, love you have for it for you to do that instead of just getting discouraged and like blaming life. I just felt amazing. like, yeah, I felt like I, I, I got this like really secret window into a new world yeah. and all like nobody at my school got this window. They were all doing the things they had to do and they were all yeah. like, we got to go to school. And do, and I was like, I got the secret passageway to like a skate world. This is cool. I thought you knew that at that time too. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you, you could feel it almost, yeah. you know, especially when you go to the skate shop and they're all, you're watching skate videos and you got this community there, but he hooked up uh, like 10 of us kids. But then he realized, he's like, man, I just hooked up everyone who buys my stuff. Mm -hmm. Like all the kids, I'm not making any money now because now I'm giving them boards. So one day he's like, hey, we need a meeting. We got to get everyone in, in the skate shop. And everybody was all gassed up. They're like, oh, dude, we got a meeting. We're so high. He's going to like put us, I don't know what people thought, but we got to get paid. Yeah, we got to get paid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or he's going to give us free skateboards now or something. So we went in there one day and I remember like, you know, yeah, I, I'll give the context after this, but yeah, like yeah. we went in there and he was like, hey guys, like, you know, I, I, I grew up also like a, my dad's a military guy. So I grew up really disciplined. So I'm like a yes, sir, no, sir. Raise my hand. Like I, I was not like a skater. Super polite too. Uh, very yeah. like, very much like that growing up. Like, I don't know, like appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. Skate. Open the door for people, all that stuff, whatever. Very South, South yeah. too. So, um, we're sitting in the skate shop and I remember like, he was like, hey guys, like, I'm glad you're all here. Got some bad news. He's like, there's 10 of us, you know? And he's just like, I can't do this B team thing anymore. I try to hook you guys up. I know it's tough out there, but like, I just can't, I'm, I'm going to lose business. So he basically was like, so for now you guys can try to get on the A team one day, whatever, but the B team's done. And mm -hmm. everyone just like, fuck, put their heads down. People were like, one kid cried, you know, it was like cried? that. Yeah. It was, it was like that level of like kids really thought they were finally getting their thing. And then all of a sudden he takes it away. I would have been the one crying. I'm like, a lot of you. <laughs> <And, and, laughs> I like, up. Like, fuck. Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's funny. Cause I, and then I like started smiling and he was like, he goes, anyone got any questions or anything? Since I'm this kid, discipline kid, I raised my hand. You know, he's like, he's like, dude, we're skaters. Just like talk. Yeah. So I'm like, and he's like, John, what's up? And I'm like, I think that's great. <laughs> and he's like, wait, why? And I was like, well, now we can work hard and get on the A team. Like, he's like, I Damn. think the B team, we were complacent. We're yeah. probably just not trying to get it. And then now we're going to be out there grinding. And the he was like. mindset is different. <laughs> it, I don't know why it was that's like good, that. Though. I have no idea why it was like that. <laughs> and then, but I was like, genuinely, it like it got me excited and I was like, yeah, let's go. And then he, uh, he was like, oh, that's funny that you say that because I had one other news. I was going to say John Hill is actually on the A team now. <laughs> he said it in front of everybody. He said it in front of everyone. <laughs> 
And what's oh, no, that's Loki fucked up. Right that's what I'm saying. Though. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad you recognize that right away. So like, right when he said that, I was like, I was like beaming, and I and you know, of course, I didn't want to smile because everybody else got kicked off. I was literally like this, like, and like, and the, oh shit, the kid that was crying probably was hurt, hurt. Oh my, oh dude, he had the worst. He was the worst one out of all of oh, them. So like, shit. I did that, and then like, I remember it was funny because um. So like this this is kind of funny the the guy who worked at the skate shop it's funny he he was like this guy who worked at the skate shop nobody liked him either yeah I'm just gonna drop this answer he happened to be black nobody liked him nobody Damn. liked me whatever but me and him best friends yeah, yeah, yeah. and like South I, Carolina man dude it's straight, <laughs> yeah you kind of like look for the people who you know whatever <laughs> anyway so this guy always fucked with me he was like he he would always uh, I'd come in and he would skate boards he'd get boards as payment for working at the skate shop but he would always be like hey do you need a board I'm like yeah yeah he'd be like five bucks I'll give you a brand new board. Board. Mm. And he would always slide me boards. Like that dude completely saved me. Wow. And he's sitting there and I'm sitting, I, I love that guy to this day. And like, I don't hustling. know, his name is John Chappelle, John Blaze. And like a lot of people there did not like this dude. And I was always like, that dude, you know, he fucked with me and that's all that matters. But he, uh, at the moment he was like, he can't stop smiling. He can't stop smiling. He was calling me out, but it was funny, but I, I could not stop smiling because this was like my goal in life. And like, dude, he fucked me. Like the skate scene after that, if they didn't like me before, it was dude, this. they were not having me. Like it was like, it's funny because people think I, I did YouTube. Now I'm getting hate, dude. It started at it started at 14, 15. Fuck. Like, and that's before the internet shit. Dude, we went it's to the skate- straight up bullying. Yeah, yeah, we went to the skate park right after, and I remember I was like this, like <laughs> skating around. You like, can't even be happy and like, look what happened, guys. Yeah, lo- I mean that's the thing. Like, luckily I could go, but the thing is too, like my family and so they didn't know what skating was, you know. So like, I felt like I got at the skate park. I'm like, I don't care that all these fools don't really like me, like, because I'm still gonna be nice to them, but like. The guy who runs skating likes me. Like the guy who owned the skate shop, he likes me. And to me, that that was all that mattered. It was like, if the guy who's running it likes me, then why why would I care about like? Mm-hmm. And like at the same time too, I was like, the reason I said that in the meeting where it was like, now we can grind harder. I was trying to pump up the people in the room. I was trying to pump up the homies. I just didn't know it was going to take that turn or whatever. But anyways, but th- that was like a huge huge moment for me. They're like, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, yeah, bro. Yeah, like that that it's funny because people think that that positivity it can be cringy or whatever. But dude, I. In those moments, like, I need to be, like, keep my head up. Let's go forward, whatever. I needed to feel that because, like, you know, I didn't have anyone to talk about this shit with. It was, like, this skating thing was, like, everything to me. And I felt like I gave up, like, being a normal kid for this one thing. So when he said, like, you're on the team, that was, that was like, the first moment. Because, like, I didn't know why. I didn't think I was that good. Like, I had no idea why he put me on the team. I never thought of myself as that good. How good were you, though? I, I think when I look back and I watch, like, the video I put out around that time, the video definitely could hold up with like their local skate shop video, which is like all the best kids. But at the time I thought like one day I'll be as good as them one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, that was the first time someone said like, you need to basically like, you need to get out of your head. You're good. And you should think you're good. You, you know, you're good at this. You should keep going and, and whatever work on it. And I remember like also that night too, like afterwards, man, I was like, I was so high. Cause like, especially uh, at school at the beginning of the year, I wrote like in this thing, it was like, what do you want to achieve this year? And I wrote, I want to be on Blue Tile Skate Shop. And like that happened or whatever. And like, we were sitting outside and I'm like, I'm like, so dude, I felt like I was like drunk. Right. And he's like sitting next to me. He has his arm around me, like the skate shop owner. And he gave me a jacket too. Like, um, was um, everybody watching this? No, nah, they, they were all gone by then. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> he was like, everybody else leave. John, you stay, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Anyways, <laughs> so he put his he put his arm around me and he's like, he basically gave me like a varsity jacket. So like blue towel or whatever. And I'm wearing, they're just like, holy shit, I got a free jacket. I'm on the team. And then this, like, I remember this, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get sort of dicey with my words here, but this, uh, in towns like that too, if there's a military base, yeah. So like in South Carolina, that's the reason we live there. Cause my dad was in the air force, yeah. air force base. When they're not in service, a lot of times they come down to like the drinking areas and cause havoc. Like they'll like fuck with people. And this dude just stands next to me and he's like looking around at the, the crew. And I, I like look up at him and he's like, what's up? And he's just like a, a army dude. Right. And I'm like, Oh, nothing. And I, I didn't know what he was doing. You know, I didn't know what he was about. And he's like, what the fuck are you looking at? This How random guy. I was 15. He's and proud. then, and I remember the skate shop owner, he looks at him and he says, he said something like, um, he said something like, get the fuck out of here or I'll fuck you up in more than one way. And I thought he was literally threatening, like, I will literally fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no. and I, but he said it in such an aggressive way. The dude actually got scared and like walked away. <laughs> I was like, yo, um, but that does sound like he wants to fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that, I think he was like trying to be like scary. To, and he was, the dude literally got scared and like walked up because his homies grabbed him. They're like, yo, 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 yo. Cause they're in the military. They're gonna get kicked out if they start a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember thinking like, that's the first time anyone's like stood up for me too, like that too. Mm-hmm. So like he put me on the team that night, he stands up for me against some dudes. Attack. I'm like, 
this is family. Like this, uh, this yeah, is it. Of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is like, and like, yeah, to me, it was like, it, it reminds me of like, um, sorry, I just keep babbling, but like, it keep reminds going. me of, uh, you know, Sheckler. I remember thinking like, damn, Sheckler got a lot of shit from people. I can't believe he kept skating. Like, I can't believe he like wanted to be a skater after his whole thing. Especially after that show. Dude, exactly. <laughs> after that show, bro, especially in my area, bro, they was teasing the fuck out. Oh, bro. same. <laughs> Dude, we were watching it like laugh and being like, who is this clown? You know, whatever. We did it in private though. We didn't. If you I see didn't... it now, it's kind of player. Actually, dude, yeah. you see it as an adult and you go, you kind of feel bad for him. You're yeah. like, damn, they put him in really tough spots or whatever. And like, and you also kind of realize when you live in California for a while too, you're like, it doesn't mean life's easy if you get all this mm -hmm. cool shit. Mm -hmm. doesn't at all. You still got to struggle in like mm -hmm. so many different ways. He's a kid too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I watch it and I'm, I'm like, why is he dealing with skaters? But you know what it is? It's the few people in skating who stood up for him and said the cool shit where he feels like his family is in skating. Even if all these other skaters hate him, he still feels like his community and his family is skating. And at the end of the day, like, even if we get a lot of hate online or whatever, I'm like, I still remember Dave. I still remember all these people who like were really there for me. And I'm like, it's still family. I don't know if I like all this other noise, but like, that's why it's hard to leave. Because yeah. you're like, they are my community. They are my family, but... Yeah, Probably. I tried to leave skateboarding a few times. I'm back at don't it. Don't we again, all? Again. Don't we all? Cheers. <laughs> That's crazy. I really don't. Hey, we've been friends for a minute, y'all, but I don't know too much about his personal life and stuff. We ain't really talk like that. I'm probably going to watch this later and be like, damn, I can last at all that. Yeah. <laughs> Silly boy. Nah, but, uh, nah, there's a lot of things I want to ask already okay. on this, but I don't want to go too far. I want to say that for later. Nah. But, um, do you remember the. You probably already said this in the story, but I'm asking it again. Do you remember the exact time you fell in love with skateboarding? At the exact time? Oh, no, that's a good question. Um, I don't. <laughs> nah, but, but I'll say this. I, I remember, like, with skating at the beginning, it was kind of up and down. It was like, we, we, me and my crew, we were really into it, but we weren't like, okay, I'm just going to say this. I, I got to right. gas you up. Lamont Holt. Oh. <laughs> is probably the fastest growing skateboard I've ever seen in my life, period. Say that one more time just in case the airplane <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> okay. People don't know. I mean, people probably know a little bit how good Lamont Holt is if you watch his video parts. But, like, I remember when Lamont's video parts came out. Like, I still remember when, like, Nigel and you filmed that video. And, I, and he was a little-ass kid. Yeah. And I remember being like, oh, wait, how long? And I think in an interview, you're like, how long have you been skating? And he was like, three days no he, he said some <laughs> crazy shit like some really really small number and i had already been skating for like 10 12 years at that point point. and i'm like he's been skating for what like this many years and he was he was literally half his part is tricks that nobody's ever done period that's crazy and like dude fakey tail like late cab flip or whatever yeah. out and like i remember you got a lot of shit for touching the wall which yeah like, bro, I'm, like, I'm like the wall's damn. right there like, You're not, i kept going back to trying not to do it i was like it's impossible i was literally thinking too like <laughs> do you think he you think the wall helps him flick his foot the late 270 flip it did like, help me turn i'm not gonna lie oh it did all right it did. Right. So that's yeah, why i was yeah. like so he did kind of right yeah you're yeah, right you're right kinda, yeah, but the rest of the part whatever dude <laughs> yeah. you're hard flipping big shit barrel healing big shit like laser flipping uh and i remember watching a new part i remember texting you about this one time you did a <laughs> nose man on nolly laser flip and then a switch nose man on a fakey laser i remember yeah, being yeah. like okay if you don't skate that's impossible no one can do that and i remember texting him about him being like Oh, that's crazy! You did those two tricks, and you're like, "Yeah, fakie, like nerd, nerding out." Like, yeah, fakie's <laughs> randomly pretty easy, actually. But Nolly, is, and I remember being like, "Damn, it probably was so easy for him just to like the flick the fakie laser out of a." Nolly was room. fucking hell, bro. But I was like, I want to do both. I don't want people saying you can only do a fakie. Did you even do Nolly laser flips, or did you just were like out of Nolly laser flips? Oh, okay, okay. But, like out of mail is crazy. Well, it's because like people. I mean, people talk about your foot position, yeah, Mike, yeah, Mikey, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I, that was the first time I seen someone put <laughs> his foot so far in the pocket of the board and flick like laser why, flips, dude. hard flips, everything, and like they look so the hard flips look so good too, and the barrel heels and everything. Laser flips are flicked, you know. Thank you. I mean, you compare it to Jeff on a song, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know he's on the you podcast. Watch this I, shit. No, I'm kidding. I'm no kidding. No, I'm kidding. I love Jeff. I actually. Jeff Wan's like one of my favorite skaters. I know he like Jeff. He was gassing you up before we started. No, no, no. I love I'm not you, just I'm, saying that. I'm kidding. <laughs> but he, but but Lamont does have like a he is like a big man flick style. You know whatever. Thank you, bro. Um, but I don't know where I was going with that. I just remember when that came out, being like, "Is this California or is this this kid?" Because I was asking you when is the exact time you fell in love with skateboarding, and it turned into that. It yeah. turned into me being like, "Lamont's so good at skating, y'all." <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think I was, I think it was like high school. I think I'd already been skating for like three or four years and I was kind of like in and out because I'm just like, I got to get, you know, you can't do this for a living. Yeah, yeah. And I think I was like trying to kind of be serious. Like, all right, what am I going to do when I grow up and da, da, da. And all that was available were like professional jobs. My dad, when I was in um, sixth grade, he got a job um, 
where he would inspect houses and basically tell people how much insurance money they were going to get, which is a pretty tough job because people you tell people like, oh, because your house got destroyed, yeah, you get uh three thousand, and they'll be like, I deserve ten thousand. So people he got you know whatever, but mm-hmm. the job was tough because he had to move out, he had to like move to different places yeah, yeah, and shit yeah. like that. Um, so I just thought I'm going to do that. Like yeah, I was yeah. like when I get, and then uh, so I think like the whole time I had a backup plan, I was like, I'm just going to do my dad's job when I get older. I'll I'll do the thing and then I'll travel the whatever, travel around America and work this job. Um. And then I think like when I hit high school, I was really filming. I dude, I filmed I filmed twenty video parts before I even like. I think right when I moved to California, I filmed two or three. But How I filmed like video parts. Huh? How long were the, vid- the video parts? They were like, full length parts. Like four some minutes. of them were like six minutes, seven Damn. minutes. Damn. Yeah, some were three, <laughs> some were four. But before I moved to California, I think I had sixteen parts, and like I was. That's how, like, the second we went in, it was like, I was like, all right, I think skating's got to work somehow. Like, I was like, here's the goal. And I was like telling my friends, like, I saw Sebo Walker, too. He lived in a van. I was like. I remember that. I used to see him in that van. When, yeah. When I oh, really? Stoner. I never knew him, though, but I used to see him. He'd Dude. Park right outside. <laughs> young me would be fanning out on you saying that. I'm like, you saw, you saw Sebo <laughs> Walker? Holy shit. Um, but I saw that video, and I thought, okay, I'm going to move to California. I'm going to get on food stamps, and I'm going to move into a van. And I'm gonna skate for the rest of my life. That was that was literally like my dream as a kid. This is why my grandfather didn't want me to skate because exactly. our mindset like that. Dude, I would love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that, it's funny because I saw Instagram the other day. You were saying this too, how your grandparents had a really hard time with you getting into skating. Super. And then I saw this Instagram, and it was like, you know, the things where it's like, of course I'm a da da da. Yeah, I do this. Yeah, yeah. There was one where it was like, of course I'm a black skater, mm-hmm. and like they immediately got into how their parents thought about it. And I'm like, yo, I think that's like a really interesting angle that I think a lot of people who aren't black don't, don't get is that your parents are like, you're doing some weird white boy surf shit. This is not it. Yeah. My grandparents was going far. They was using the F word. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah. Were, they was thinking all my homies were my boyfriends. Cause they wore skinny jeans and had long hair. I mean, my girlfriends, cause they thought they was girls. Did you have skinny jeans? No, they wouldn't let me. Damn. Bro, so I was going to tease. You were living with them, right? Well, my grandparents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that was okay. my mom and dad, pretty much. Oh, okay, okay. You know, but yeah, trust me. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I mean that that's a context I think a lot of people don't get is how hard it is. I think to be a black skater in a lot of places because, like, yeah. I mean, this is a video with three or four different black skaters all with the same issue. You know, they're like, yeah, all, all of our parents were like, "What are you doing?" Like, <laughs> this was is... like it was a white boy sport. Uh, yeah, yeah, today, yeah. And it was just like, "What the fuck is you doing? You embarrassing us?" Yeah, yeah. yeah my grandfather, my grandfather told me one time, "RP, I love him, obviously." Mm. Uh, and I kind of understood what he meant. I wish I was older so I could explain to him. No, I ain't going the weird route with these niggas. Like it's some weirdos, yeah, musty, yeah. not really trying to fucking yeah, be yeah, clean, yes, whatever. Yes, no yeah, offense, yeah. niggas. But uh, <laughs> they, uh, I mean, one time he was like, not to cut off what you were saying, but he got mad. I came home late at like one in the morning without answering the phone, not letting him know hmm. nothing because I was training. I was just practicing. Yeah, yeah. He told me he was like, <laughs> I write it for you. <laughs> To be at a girl's house or something. Damn. They'd be doing this. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, what? Damn. I was like, all right. <laughs> it, it seemed that way too. I remember like, I don't know. I remember in New York, I was talking to a dude on a subway and he was black and he was like kind of angry about it. He's like, why are you? He's like, what's so good about skating? I don't get it. He was angry. You know, he's like an older black dude. And I, would, I remember being like, damn, like if you had a kid who skated, like this would be tough. You know, and I, I always think back to the interview that I had with you where I'm like, that that that's just a really tough thing if you got like the people in your life who take care of you who just are not down for the thing that you're into that's a that's a very tough thing and like i will say that was the thing i got really lucky with is not only did my parents buy the boards but they were like they were super down for skating i want to say a different struggle that you guys go through especially what you just explained Uh, i mean i would never understand going from a, a place that you came from all the way to like California and just starting over you know what i mean yeah and it's weird too because i try to explain it because you know like California is so like liberal and then South Carolina is so conservative yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. and like every time I mention you know like my I love my family my brother he has like Trump sticker on his car you know like yeah. they're like that you know and and like with me it's you know I don't have the opposite views but it's funny because I feel like because I live in both worlds it's actually really easy for me to be empathetic to both like I actually in California you know everyone here they'll clown easy on conservatives Trump is like that they'll clown so easily but with me I'm like you know I get it like I get why even though you know maybe I'm not super down for all that but like I've listened to my family long enough to know why people down there vote for Trump. You know, it's, 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 it's hard to say because in the deep South, all the white people there feel like they got fucked in life. And then they feel Mm. like on TV, they're telling them that they're the bad guys Mm. and they're thinking, 
I got screwed too. I didn't get anything in life. I, I grew, you know, I grew up in a trailer park. I didn't got nothing, and then now I'm getting yelled at for being this like a. Uh, That's unfortunate. Yeah, for being like this oppressor. But niggas don't care. Like, yeah, these yeah, niggas no, over no. here, they, no, I'm not saying I don't, but I'm saying like a lot of niggas over here don't understand that. And they just don't give a fuck. That's the thing about they shit. And I want, I want to like try to explain that. I'm like, cause I, cause like to me, I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm not like a white dude in Columbia. But I, I get where they're coming from. But you know, sometimes I'm like, but you got to get where they're coming from. Like, yeah. there, there's 100%. two. Yeah, yeah. There's two yeah. sides to it, and like honestly, it would be. The middle is like not far from the two sides. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. middle's right. You just have to kind of hop over a little bit and you kind of get each other. But people really like, they feel really protective of their ideals and their that traditions. That sucks, bro. And I'm like, yeah, just listen. That's unfortunate. Cheers again. Yeah, man. Bro, this soldier was kind of strong, huh? It's strong. It's I'm like, over here feeling it. I might be slurring. How much percent do you think is in that soldier? Oh, fuck. How much do I win if I guess it? No, I'm just kidding. $3. Uh, 17%. I think it's like, well, there is a 24%. I don't know what that is, though. What that might be 17, fuck? but yeah. I'm yeah. a little lit on the pot. Yeah, it's strong, right? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So I'm drinking this, which isn't much, but I had a little bit of that before. Okay, cool, so, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, I feel better, Dan. Um, what sponsors did you want to get on besides, you know, the skate shop you was on and all that? Dude, it's so funny. My first, uh, my first, when I was in like fourth grade I, or second grade or something. <laughs> no, fourth grade. I wrote what I wanted to be when I grew up. Okay. And I wrote, I wanted to be a pro skater for, I think I said Dark Star. I think I said Monster Trucks, which isn't around anymore. I don't know, some wheel company, mini logo or something. So Dark Star Skateboards was like the one that I was aiming for. I just thought they were so cool. And now they're just like, not. I mean, I don't know. I feel bad. They never seen, they never was cool out here where I was from. Oh, okay, that. okay. I mean, not California period, but like Inglewood, they used to like. So I had bad it. taste, huh? <laughs> I'm not saying it. <laughs> no, yeah, no. I wanted to be on. I wanted to be I'll on be that. A dark star. If, if they offered, I would have took it. <laughs> yeah, I think now. I mean, like, what's not with Greg Lutzko was on? And he was making Greg Lutzko. Beyond Bank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, dude, interview Greg Lutzko. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. That'd be good. Yeah. I, I met him in uh, Vegas. We partied a little bit. I could see that. I cool could see you guys nigga. getting along with partying. Cool ass nigga. But yeah, so that's it. Just dark star. That was the only company that I really wanted to be on. I think. Yeah, that was like my only dream i also just thought like i'll take what i can get i'm in south carolina of course. and i remember like i would get on local companies there's this company called celtic that did not end well the dude who owned it was like not happy that i was quitting but when i got on my local skate shop dude was like bro you cannot be saying yes to everything that comes your way <laughs> like all these random local companies but like it's weird because even today after coming from like a place that's not california what's up oh sure <laughs> sarah lamont Hey, how you doing? Oh, my uh, gosh. Might as well speak on that now. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I think I bonked her head a little bit, but it's okay. Nah, nah, you're gonna bonk it. I have a baby, so this is a human baby right here. <laughs> bit higher, bit higher to the camera. This is a human baby, you see? Ta-da! John Hill got a baby now. How what does up? it feel? Feels good. I was gonna ask you about it, because you've been a baby daddy for a long time. Since I was young. Yeah, 21, actually. 22. So your kid's like 10? It's like eight. Eight, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, so my situation was crazy. I don't know if you saw... Actually, did you see Sarah's video about it? No. Okay. Yo, it's crazy. So Tell my situation was crazy. I don't crazy. know nothing. All right. So my wife was pregnant, and things were going well. We were excited. And then six months into the pregnancy, uh, she started having a fever. She started feeling really sick. Oh, no. So we're like, all right, let's go to the hospital, go to the ER, and check it out. I wonder what the wind's going to feel like on the on the baby. She's never outside. Oh, um, <laughs> so six months into it, uh, we went to the hospital and they were like, okay, I think you, uh, she was like, I have a fever. And they're like, it's probably your appendix. So they're like, let's remove your appendix, which is a surgery. Yeah. That so, happened to me. Really? Yeah. I got oh, mine removed. I thought I was going to be dead if I didn't go to the hospital. They said, yeah. Okay. So they, they yeah. got rid of her appendix and mm -hmm. got through the surgery. And afterwards they're like, yeah, it wasn't your appendix, but they put her on a bunch of antibiotics and some of them started working. So they actually deduced, they were like, okay, if these work, that means you have a staph infection. Now, this is crazy because staph can lead to this thing called sepsis, and yeah. sepsis is a thing that honestly has killed parents and their kids. Damn. Like, it's straight up killed people. So we started freaking out, and the doctors, they were trying to be, like, reasonable. They're like, all right, you, you might have to deal with this, so be worried, whatever. We're like, all right, well, we're, we're worried. Yeah, we're worried. Trust yeah. us, we're good. Um, and then, so she had sepsis. So we were in the hospital for, like, four or five days, and they were like, and then all of a sudden her water broke. Six uh. months, this is three months early, so in six months her water broke. And the doctors were like, oh, shit. So they were like, all right, lay in this bed. We're going to position you like this. We're going to pump you full of all these drugs and this and this and this. And try to stay in that position for two months. So we were like, we're going to be at the hospital for two months. Oh, My wife's wow. going to be laying in the bed. Um, so we were tripping on that. But then we were like, whatever makes the baby healthy, you know, because if, if, the baby needs time to cook. 
two days later, all of a sudden, uh, I already said our water broke. Sorry, there were so many things that happened. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, we had a doctor and a nurse. We had the worst doctor and nurse pair in the entire hospital that night. No. Uh, they were completely incompetent, and they were like trying to find the heartbeat of the baby on the stomach, and they couldn't find it. And she was like, yeah, I think I found it. I'm looking at the machine. I'm like, I know you didn't find it. I'm looking at the machine. And she's yeah. like, no, nah, it's there. And I'm like, so the doctor comes in. I'm like, yo, she's, she's saying she found the heartbeat. She didn't. So the daughter walks in and she's like, um, yeah, I think she's good. And we're like, why y'all keep saying I think? Yeah, we're like, there needs to be a heartbeat. Like, <laughs> like that, a heartbeat fuck? is really important when you have a kid. Yeah, yeah. So this took like an hour. I went to the local Target during that moment and I, I bought like a, a mattress because we were living in the hospital. Um, and then all of a sudden, the, the, uh, another doctor walks in and he looks and he's like, you're in labor. He's like, the baby is coming out of you right now. And, oh, shit. So like this is two three months early by the way. So they rush her to the room and she's like, "All right, well, are you gonna hook me up with like the drugs that you need for birth?" And they're like, "You can't have any drugs. Oh, no. The baby is upside down, so she was coming out ass first instead of head first. Oh fuck! I think the only saving grace is that the baby was two pounds instead of like okay. or less than two pounds. She was one point yeah. fifteen ounces. So she had to deliver a baby with no drugs or anything, ass first, and I wasn't even there. I was on the way back. And I'm like driving as fast as I can. Yeah. I'm like, no. Anyways, this is like, so this was after. So I have, so we have gardeners potentially coming, and then my wife's potentially coming. So I'm like losing concentration. Yeah, no, go ahead, um, go ahead. But so it was like when she delivered. So she was in the room. I run in the room. Her mom's freaking out. She's like, she's like, she's going into labor. The doctors are idiots. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So I, I run in the room and I hold her hand and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like, all right, let's push, let's get this baby out. So I'm sitting there looking like, all right, here comes the baby. And my wife's just totally chill. She's like this. And I'm like, why is she so good? Like, usually when you deliver, you're screaming. Yeah. And there's one point they're like, you need to push one more time. So she pushes, and it was like the placenta or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, a lot yeah, of details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like... I was uh, freaking out when I saw that happen. Yeah, I was just, I was yeah. like, all right, cool, the placenta's out. And then all of a sudden, like, I saw nurses and doctors, like, taking off their gloves and walking. I'm like, yo, where's the baby? And then all of a sudden, a, a doctor, a NICU doctor walks by, and he goes, we took your daughter to the NICU, which is, like, where they take premature babies. They're like, all right, we got to go. We took you to the baby NICU, and he, like, ran out. So I'm just like, wait, did you deliver? I literally didn't even know she delivered. I'm talking to the other doctor, and he's like, he's like, yeah, the baby's out. I'm like, and I was just tripping because I didn't even know the baby was out. And then right at that moment, they were like, all right, give her the drugs. And, like, they just pumped her right at that minute, and she just completely lost consciousness right away. So I'm sitting there, like, holding my wife's hand. She's blacking out. Mm. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Damn. So bro. what I found out later, which is scary, is since it's three months early, they had to resuscitate Daisy to keep her alive. Oh. Like right at the beginning, it was like this. It was such a such a fucked up, stressful situation. I bet. Um, but luckily, the way things worked out is, uh, I mean, so we had to visit the hospital every day for like four to six hours for the next two months. But like, as selfish as it sounds, once my wife delivered, she felt immediately better. You know, she was like, got the baby out. She started feeling good. But obviously we had to carry that guilt for two months being like, yeah. man, our daughter's in the hospital. So we would visit and it was just this like stressful, shitty situation. I bet. Um, but after all that, my wife made a video about it. it. It's It goes so into detail. She went through hell. I don't know how she did what she did. Um, Strong. But now the baby's chilling. Like the baby's like now like totally fine and nothing Looking wrong. Looking healthy, and like, everything. Yeah, baby's in this situation. Usually they, they get like a lot of issues that follow them later on. In the <laughs> Shoot, do you think we have to move to the office? We can. They're coming yeah. this way. All right, we're going to move this to the office, y'all. <laughs> my bad. Uh, I mean, it's not our bad, but. It's Lamont's bad. Crows and freaking airplanes, earthquakes, and everything happening. It's but California. We up in here, and I'm sure the audio gonna sound good. Yeah, this is gonna sound it. way better. People are probably gonna say we should have started here. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I like starting outside. Yeah, the backyard yeah, yeah. is cool. Yeah, I forgot what we was talking about. Oh, the baby. Okay, cool. That's amazing. I didn't baby. know all yep. of that. You said you want to ask me some questions about that. About the baby? Yeah. Oh yeah, it. yeah. You've been a baby, baby daddy. Baby. You've been a baby. You've been a baby for a minute. You've been a baby. You never grew out of that, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, I feel like your uh, your kid was popping up a lot at the beginning, mm -hmm. but I feel like I haven't seen him a bunch. What was that a conscious decision? Yeah, I mean, I show him on my story all the time. Okay, and stuff like that. But like, or if it's just like casual stuff, but we didn't really fully, I, at least mainly me. I, but people would be saying crazy stuff on the internet. Yeah, that's and the I'm thing. just like, yeah. I'm trying to chase this whole music thing along with the YouTube stuff and. I just didn't want to put him in the middle of that right now until he got older. Now he's starting to get into that age where he get, and he was super shy of the camera too. Mm. Now he's like down to kind of do it. So I was thinking about putting him back on. I have YouTube a question. What's it? So so my my kid is so young that they're not even smiling yet. Like yeah. they're not even at the point. So so I want two things. I mean, were you? 
I don't know if you were like exactly there at the moment it was happening, but like the first, like when the kid starts laughing for the first time, is that how long does that usually take? And how was that? And then also when the kid Damn. talks for the first time, it's all different for um, all kids from what I know. Like um, my nephews, for example, are the same age as my son, and they they learn how to walk and talk later than him, but it was like normal. Mm. It took him, my son took a, a lot longer to talk though, but he was walking and stuff. Um, I don't know. It's all different. It could be mm. earlier. It could be later. I mean, was it was it when it happened? Was it like trippy? Were you like, whoa? Oh yeah, they're smiling I'm still, at me. I'm still tripping right now. Oh, okay. The okay. way he's talking to me now is tripping me out. He talks to me like a grown man sometimes. Wow. Roasting me, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, man. But not nah, the struggles of doing the YouTube and and having a kid. The difference with me and you, I would say, is uh. He came around right when I started going hard on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, you were young. I yeah. mean, you were 22. You already, yeah, you already established. Yeah, you I mean, yeah, I mean? yeah. You, yeah. Got, you got stuff unlocked. No, I got, yeah, I got very lucky <laughs> where it was like this point it happened, but it was, yeah, yeah. I know it's funny because it happened so like, we were literally one day like, yeah, I think I'd be down for a kid. And then the next day she was pregnant. <laughs> Like, like she just like took the test and she's like, I'm pregnant. That's crazy. We just talked about that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was crazy. And then we were like, all right, well, let's do it. And like, it's funny because we had a, we had a pregnancy scare when we were living in New York city. Yeah. And I remember even in New York, when we, when we heard it, we were actually kind of tripping. Like we were cool about it. Cause we didn't want to, it's funny. You don't want to say anything to where later on you have to be like, oh yeah. When I found out you were about to be born, I was screaming fuck a thousand times. So, so when I found out, I was like, oh, that's great. And I'm like looking at my wife, like, oh my God, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Um, and like in New York, it was actually tripping us out. And then once we got to California, I think because California feels way more like my my place, New York is like her place for sure. But I was like, well, if we're in my place, a place I feel comfortable, a place I love, and I know pretty well now. Yeah. I mean, a kid is, I mean, that's awesome. I can't wait to have a kid here. That's gonna be dope. So yeah, you guys are gonna be great parents. I can already tell. It's gonna be fun. We'll see. Off the jump. Yeah. Dude. Uh, but let's get back into it. All right, let's do it. Did I ask you when did you get to LA? No. When did you get to LA? It was uh, 1991 when I was one years old, dude, and I just made my. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, I, uh, deal. No, I was like, uh, I think I was 22 or 23. So 20. God, I'm so good at math. 2012, 2013. <laughs> dude, that that moment, I can't even explain how good it felt, man. Like, it, it's funny. I, I feel bad because I'm like, okay, so for you, if you were thinking about like, yo, one day I'm going to get out there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to that place, mm -hmm. is there a place like that for you? Or it's like I could be in a different country or like a, a, a France or no, that's why I was telling you I, I would never understand that feeling that you guys that's got from that yeah that's why I feel <laughs> I, like sometimes I feel kind of bad because I'm like yeah because like as a kid it really helped me to be like there's that place out there yeah, that's yeah, better yeah. or whatever but like I think when I was um, it was cool because my you know when I was 18 or 19 or whatever my parents actually moved back so we, we started living together again and I got to like you know we we like rekindled our relationship it was great and then I remember like you know it, it, it's a it's a strange relationship. But as we move forward, it was like she, my mom came up to me one time and she was just like, what do you want to do? Like, what are you doing? And I was like, I think I was always too scared to admit that I wanted to be like a pro skater because it was such a big thing, you know, yeah. being like, I want to be pro. It, it was like a delusional dream. And I, I felt like I was going to sound like an idiot saying that, especially like living in South Carolina. I'm like, what am I going to do? And she asked me and I was like, I kind of want to be a pro skater. And she was like, well, do it. Like, do yeah. something. She was like, you literally go do something. And she was like, why don't you call Tony Hawk? And I was like, well, I don't have his number or nothing. And I was just like, uh, how do you do that? And it's funny because people out here, they can figure out a way to call Tony Hawk. Yeah, like Spencer Barton connected with him. You know, it's like, you can figure out a way. It's crazy to think about. It is crazy. <laughs> but it's you should interview Tony Hawk, by the way, one day. One day. It'll be the funniest interview. Oh, my God. I'm going to ask him different ass questions. Hell, yeah. I'm going to have to warn him. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah, she was like, yeah, go out there and do that. And I was like, huh. And then I think that was when it, the first time where I was like, wow, it's really useful in life when somebody tells you, like, you got this. And I felt like that was like one of the first times somebody's like, hey, you got this. And I I think I, I just went up to two of my friends and like I had gotten, you know, I wanted to keep skating. So I was 22. All my old friends quit skating. I basically got into like a new crew. They, you know, they moved on, got into a new crew. And like the crew kind of kept getting younger too. So I'm like, I don't want to be like a 30 year old hanging out with, you know, 18 year olds, like because they're still filming and shit. Yeah. So I like, so there was two homies and, and one was actually older than me and he was a photographer and he was like local photographer. He was shooting for the magazine. And one dude who was a filmer who I gave him the camera and I'm like, yo, you should film. And like, I just went up to both of them. I'm like, California? 
Like what? What? Why? If we all moved to California, I was like, I'll do the, I'll skate every day, every second. I'll kill myself. You film, like, like just skating. You'll film. You'll shoot photos, and we'll all like, you know, if we need to like separate eventually and go with our own ways, we'll do that. But we need to start together, build a community, and let's see what happens. That's amazing. And like they got, dude, it was just like the dream. We were like, yo. And then I think after like, uh, I think we said like, let's plan for six months from now. And we just, that was it. It was like six months from moving to California. I think I told my mom and everyone, and they're like, cool, yeah, do it, whatever, who cares? And I was like, all right, we're doing it. So like, yeah, so we just like, we just worked basically for six months, saved up all our money. And I came out to California with like $2,500, which is a lot, actually. I mean, you can actually do kind of a lot if you're trying to stay super low key. But where were you staying at? I was staying in Long Beach on a... 7th and and like one of the main roads right there but it was kind of a sketchy area or whatever but we we went out there and dude the second I got to California this is gonna sound so cheesy but I remember looking around and being like seeing all the diversity and I, I like damn near started crying <laughs> I was just like this nigga dramatic I am so dramatic <laughs> I was looking around like damn this place is completely different this is cool like this is awesome and i remember like i was just really feeling it plus like the weather so much better and like this is gonna sound so funny to people in california but like it smells a certain way out here that's like like good i know people here think it smells like trash because there's so much trash in california it smells good it smells good it smells like um like water i don't know it's like i don't know how to explain it because we were near the beach too so it was just like this like utopia you know i moved out there and i'm like yo and then i remember like we got into this new place and we were all paying like 300, 400 a month or whatever. And I, I basically, as soon as I got out here, there was a wheel company called Subliminal Wheels. And they had on um, Marquise Preston and Tony Carr, who are really good skaters. And they're like, you're going to be the third dude. And as soon as you get out here, we'll give you a thousand bucks if you skate with us for a year. And I was like, Wait, what? A thousand for a year. Yeah, no. Oh, at the time it was like, I got $2,500. You're giving me a third of my income. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, so since I knew that, that's when I was like, oh, let's go early because like yeah. I'll have 3,500 the second I show up. So as soon as I show up, I mean, I, I could skate every day for three months. And in those three months, dude, I did everything I could. Like I filmed like a five tricks fix for trans world i filmed a mag minute for skateboarder mag i filmed a video part for the ride channel like i went like as hard as i possibly could in three months i filmed a full ass part because we skated every single day and i met everyone and then i remember going to the like cherry park the first day i show up it's like pro skaters you know i'm like yo this is crazy and i'm like and no one and everyone was super cool with me like the locals were cool the skaters were cool like everyone was so nice because i kept telling my story too and i remember like seeing all these pros i was talking to people i was meeting people and then i remember we went to like the local bar which is called red room and as soon as i walk in there's like skate videos playing all over and i'm like what is this world there's skate videos playing at the bar not black. It was in it was Long like Beach because I think black is in a. Uh... Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. It's a pl- called place called Red Room. Room. It's a tiny bar, and it had like three TVs, always playing skate videos, <laughs> and I was tripping because like at our hometown, it's a college town, <laughs> so it's all like imagine, imagine frat times like the frattiest dude you can think of and the most sorority ass woman you can think of that was like the bar life in columbia so i never went to the bars or anything but it was just like whatever and it's always like college football playing on the tv and everyone yelling so when i'm seeing skate videos we were we were freaking out and that was the first time i got drunk ever in my life was at this bar i'm sitting there just like i'm in heaven i'm like chugging beers and like and even my friends they're like that's an amazing feeling it was a good feeling too because my friends like I was always very serious growing up super I was like let's do this I was always like it's like it's 1am guys let's go skate right now I got the generator I got the lights we got to do this right now so my friends were always like really they were kind of stressed being my friend but they thought like all right if we keep hanging we'll like we'll find our way but goddamn, this dude's stressful um but that night when I let loose they were like they were so happy dude I could it's funny it was the first time I felt like they were like comfortable talking to me like dude finally you're relaxed you know, actually could like you're not just hey like, you're not <laughs> terribly annoying you're not like yeah super too driven I guess in certain ways but it worked out and it was cool I mean that was like the you know welcome to Long Beach and I got like the full like all the pros are here this is cool I feel good oh and the whole reason I moved to California in the first place is because Birdhouse said they would take care of me if I moved out here and that's so, what I was gonna ask you next that's what I figured how did that happen? How did you get sponsored by Birdhouse? So the Birdhouse thing, dude, so lucky. Like, incredibly lucky. It's a big company. It's a big company. My good friend Tony Hawk owns it. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know him at all. I never. I only met him like twice the whole time I was on it. But this is actually wild because Birdhouse was going from, they were doing a East Coast tour from New York City to Miami. 
New York City and Miami are some of the best places in the world for skateboarding. So many good skate spots. And they were going to pass by our area and skate this city called Fayetteville in North Carolina. And one of the riders was like, yo, I've been to Fayetteville. There's nothing there. And he's right. There's not, you know, whatever. If you're from Fayetteville, I'm sorry. It's, it's small. So for some reason, I don't know why, I think he knew, heard of Columbia. I heard of the skate shop. He goes, let's just go by Columbia. And they were like, really? They're like, what's that? You know, whatever. So they, they were like, all right, we're going to go by Columbia. We're going to skate there for a day and it's going to be great. So all of a sudden I caught wind where like they started reaching out to the skate shop and being like, yo, we're coming to Columbia. And all of a sudden, you know, we caught wind where it was like, Tony Hawk's coming to Columbia. Oh my God. And of course the skate shop, since I was riding for the skate shop and stuff, they hit me up, my two homies and like, yo, Tony Hawk's coming to Columbia. That must sound crazy. It was like, we were like, what? Why? We were literally like, why? And then they had to explain like, oh, because one of them, you know, they, they kind of fuck with our community or whatever. I'm like, why? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> why? Again. And then, uh, yeah, it, it was. So they asked me, they're like, All right, how about you, homie, homie, like two homies of mine, Dorian, this kid, Chris, Tommy. They're like, you guys go out with, uh, you guys show them around. And I remember I was so stressed and anxious about the idea of showing Tony Hawk around that I literally at first was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. That's too scary. Like, I can't, I just can't do it. That's too much stress. Fuck. And I think, I think the day before I was just like, I, I, I will for the rest of my life be like, I'm such an asshole if I don't go to this thing. So I was like, all right, let's show around Tony Hawk. So they show up in like two tour vans. It's a tech deck tour van and a yo-yo tour van. So they were doing a tour together with these two big ass brands. And yeah, Tony Hawk shows up at the park. And I remember like, I, I think, yeah, I was at the park at the time and I remember Tony Hawk he just starts skating and this kid looks at him and we had like one kid at the park because we didn't have skaters and he's looking he's like and he's just like that's Tony Hawk and he just starts screaming and then I was like yo this is crazy so like I went up and like I met everyone I met uh, David Loy Sean Gregoire who like I think quit soon after Tony Hawk Clint Walker Clive Dixon like it was Sean Hale it was the whole team they're all skating our local skate park and I'm like yo I'm watching the Birdhouse team skate our local park um, so that was it. And they were like, Hey, we want to street skate. We want to try to find some spots. Can you guys show us around? And I was like, you know, what's funny is like, I'm like, dude, we've been filming video parts. We filmed 15 video parts by this point. We know where all the spots are. We know like the, the hour you can skate each spot. So we, we had luckily because of our history, we had built such a perfect day of skating for them. Yeah. And like, That's they, amazing. they didn't even know what to expect. And we were like, I right, got you. And they're like, let's go street skate. And we're like, cool, perfect. Took them to this handrail and they were tripping. They're like, yo, this is the best handrail ever. It was like this uh, two flat, two flat, two perfect handrail, like almost a flat bar, but tall. And then we all just went as hard as we could. And like, I was skating, you know, I've skated the trail plenty of times. They didn't, you know, they didn't know, but they were kind of <laughs> tripping. Shit, like, I'm like, I'm going in. Oh, dude, I went as hard as I possibly could. And they were kind of tripping. Like they were like, yo, this kid's good. And I remember they were, they kept being like, I could see by their eyes that they were like, yo, this is, you're good. <laughs> Sorry. In the middle of my story, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Clint Walker actually did a crook nolly flip on it for a video part. And it was it was wild. But like I had a good session. They had a good session. Boom. And I was like, all right, let's That's go to the crazy. And then I was like, let's go to the next spot. So like we ended up skating. Um, we skated so many good spots the first day that they actually stayed the night and they wanted to skate it again the next day. Damn. So I, yeah, so we had such a good time that I showed them to two different days of spots. And they skated every spot. They loved every spot. And I remember at the end of the the thing they were like yo you guys killed it like thanks for hooking us up da 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 and uh that was it you know it was just like and we we were so happy like we were like we did it and then right after that too i like finished the video part where I, like some of the tricks i did on that trip went into the video part and like that was it they moved on and i remember they filmed all that and like tony hawk he bore slid this nine stair handrail in uh our area and it was the first time he skated a handrail in like 20 years That's impressive. so when thrasher came out this article came out about like miami all the way New York City to Miami, it was 10 skate pictures and eight of them were in Columbia. And I'm like, damn, imagine a full ass tour through the whole East Coast and our city got represented like, yeah, eight of the 10 photos. So I'll pitch our city on. We honestly, in that moment, in this interview, I haven't really put it on. <laughs> in that moment, we really put on the city. And uh, afterwards, I remember I went to Cincinnati to work with my dad. He was over there doing a, doing a thing or whatever. And I'm sitting there on an email and I'm just like, and I like remember my mom being like, yo, reach out to Tony Hawk. And I'm like, I did just hang out with Tony Hawk. That's crazy. It's a movie. I, was, I was just like, that, I was like, this. Is, I was like, that that is crazy. And then I was like, you know what? I got along with the manager. Well, his name was Jerome. So I was just like, oh, fuck it. And I was just like, message the manager. I'm like, hey man, do you think like I could maybe get flowed some boards? Because I didn't know how to talk. I'm just like, uh. And here here's like a video. And he's like, and immediately he just replies like, yeah, hell yeah. He's like, yeah, we'll hook you up right away, dude. You killed it. It was fun hanging out with you. Everyone likes you. And he's like, we'll just start hooking you up right now. And I was like, and I remember like, I didn't know how to tell the story because, because my dad didn't get it, you know? And I'm sitting there like in a room, like on my laptop, like looking around, like, oh shit. 
I'm like, who do I talk to? And I'm just like, I'm like, dad. And I try to explain it to him. I'm like, listen, I'm like, I'm telling you this is good news. He's like, oh, that sounds cool. Whatever. You know, he didn't really get it. But I'm like, I'm like, no, this is going to change everything. So that was actually the That's start of, crazy, of being like, oh, dude, I, th I think I might be able to make this work if it works. So for the next like six months, I sent him a video every month of like a minute of footage or two minutes of footage. So I sent him so much footage. And then I ended up skating a bunch of local contests and we had a damn am which is like you skate damn am and it basically the top two places go to tampa am and you like automatically qualify for the semifinals contests are lame but at the time i was like yeah, i was in a damn am i fucking lost <laughs> nice nice that's what you get dude you should have skated more um but uh no i went to the damn am and um i skated well and i got second place and then I also won the Destroyer Award, which is like the kid who skates the best of the weekend. It was in Atlanta. So I skate this contest. I get second place. I win the Destroyer Award. And then the fo you know, the photos and stuff come out and I send it to the Birdhouse guy. And he he legitimately was like, whoa, damn. Like, oh, you're good at that too. Cool. And he started, I could tell he was really getting excited. And he was sending me more and more boards too. So I was getting all these boards every month. And then I just like lied. I was like, hey man, I'm moving to California. I was wondering like if I moved to California... How would things go? You know, like, it, could you guys maybe, could I skate with you guys? Whatever. And he's like, you come out here, we'll take care of you. That's what he said. And that was it. Like that one email, I was just like, all right, it's done. I was like, that, and that was when I decided to move to California. It was just that moment being like, all right, let's go. That's fucking amazing. Man. Yeah, it was crazy. And like, dude, it was in mean, South Carolina. Like that's never going to happen. Like maybe Atlanta or whatever, some North Carolina maybe. But like, it was just such a crazy coincidence. Honestly, it's a lot of luck. Like you can't really explain that to someone. Like, oh, just do what I did, because like that's not gonna happen if you're in you some small luck, town. But you can also call it because you've been positive the whole time. Like you attracted that shit towards you, bro. Yeah, I mean, I skated a bunch, so when the moment showed up, I was like very ready, and uh, yeah, it worked out. I mean, like I skated while well that trip, so yeah, and then I came out to California and I hung out with Birdhouse for a little while. But okay. yeah, yeah. So Dan, we're gonna get back to Birdhouse a little bit, but I wanted to ask you about and how'd you get on Revive. Oh, Revive. Yeah. So Revive is the company I'm pro for now. Um, Revive was after YouTube. So I got on you. So I started making YouTube videos. Yeah. And uh, dude, YouTube happened so quickly that it was just like a fever dream. It was like, I want to make YouTube videos because I see that Nigel Alexander and these people are making it. And I remember thinking it's funny because like Nigel made videos and I'm assuming that you probably got some like you probably knew that some people weren't re weren't really into like the Nigel thing. They're like, "Yo, this is kind of corny." Like some people thought that. Everybody was telling me that. Yeah, right. So I, I get Especially to see the companies. Oh yeah, yeah. No, exactly. So yeah, exactly. I had a dude at Trans World who was kind of saying some stuff. He was like, "I never yeah. listened to them." Nah. Good. The reason well, why I wasn't part of it, but that's a whole different. That's story the reason you're still making a living too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember this this dude in in California was like, "Yeah," he's like, "Ah, oh, that Nigel guy." Da da da. And I'm like, "Man, I like Nigel." And I was like, "You know why I like Nigel? Because when I was living in Columbia." I fucked up my knees so bad. I thought I was done skating. And then he put out a video called um, How to Stay Young Forever. And he made a video talking about how to make your knee feel better if you, if you fucked it up. And I remember being like, you know what? Like, I remember at the time too thinking like, yeah, like I watched some of his videos. I'm like, I get why people are clowning on this. It's not really my thing either, but whatever. I saw that video and I thought, you know what? This dude is like actually trying to help people. Like yeah. he made a video and I, I watched the video and I started doing everything he said in the video, stretching it the way I bought like the uh, ice machine he told me to buy or whatever, mm -hmm. put it on my knee every day. I stopped skating. Like I was like fully trying and then my knee healed. And I'm like, this, this dude who's like lame just healed me and allowed me to keep skating. And I'm like, so I sent him a message on Facebook and I think I was like, you're the goat. Thanks, dude. Da, da, da. Said all this nice stuff. And I think he replied. And I remember tripping me like, oh, dude from California replied to me. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then when I moved out here, luckily, like through the grapevines, I was skating a bunch. I put out a bunch of parts. Like by the time I was basically done with like, I, I so we'll get to it later, but like, you know, I got. I got kicked off Birdhouse, and then I got on this company called Friendship Skateboards, got kicked off that, and I was like, all right, I'm done. That was it. I tried. And then, I I, yeah, I was just like, I was like, well, whatever. I'll just work this job. And I actually ended up building this small company that did really well for me. Yeah. And then uh, during that time, I was like, man, I got all this free time. I'm like, I want to do, I want to make some YouTube videos. And I remember immediately, I was like, I should just go hang out with that Nigel guy. Mm. So I hit up Nigel, and I'm like, bro, like, what do you want filmed? I'll, I'll skate whatever, and I'll film whatever. And Nigel, dude, he puts you through the ringer. Like skating with Nigel is like, it made me cry, dude. <laughs> Multiple times. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, like, like how gnarly the sessions were, or just the stuff he was saying, or what? A mixture. Like never nothing like crazy, like fuck you or something like that. But just like just the pressure was crazy, but it got me good. Yeah. I I don't I don't think 
he in any way sees how hard it is to keep up with like because he skates with people who are gnarly yeah. so when you're on that session you're like oh shit i gotta jump down this 11 rail okay 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 yeah. so you're trying to do it and he's like he's cool i mean he's like he's not i never really felt the pressure from him but like you go to his apartment he lives in a nice ass place and like whatever and you're like damn like this is cool he's got a nice place one thing I will say, like with the birdhouse, I remember when I was AM, I kind of mentioned them like, is there like a money thing with going AM for a birdhouse? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, they're like, yeah, it's like uh, like 300 bucks a month or something. And I remember being like, wow, that's a lot of work to get, you know, not to get close to enough to not even pay rent, you know, whatever. And they were talking about just from board companies and they're like, usually that's like soft goods that pay you more money. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, this is going to be tough. Well, Y'all give me a part of those soft goods and give me those Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, do you hook me up on a shoe company? But like <laughs> nobody gets hooked up on a shoe company nowadays, you know? It's like hard for everyone. Like the best skaters in the world don't get hooked up by a Nike or an Adidas or whatever. Um, so I started hanging out with a Nigel and immediately like, man, just seeing like a different world altogether of like him being inspired in different ways. Like he was like, oh, it's work as hard as we can for this video da, da, da. and then he, he would skate with like a bunch of other people that were like weirdos but i was like i kind of like all these dudes like you know i met richie rich i was skating with him a bunch oh, yeah, Richie. and i was just like man i love this guy yeah. like i was like i i've you know i went on birdhouse trips and dude there were so many assholes on birdhouse dude i'm sorry there were some mean ass people on that team what you mean in what ways like like fully me being like like I was talking to one of the dudes and I was like, I was like, yo man, oh, I saw that part you put out the other day. I'm like, crazy, you fucking wall read that rail that or that wall, da da da. And he would look at me, blink, and then turn around and just start talking to the dude. Like it was like, what do you see? I can't deal with that shit. He he he, he was just like he, he I think he thought I was like being like fake nice or whatever. And I'm like, and I remember being like, Oh, I've never had that happen before. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like later on in the trip it happened again, and I was like, Whoa. And then the way they were acting, I was like, I've never hung out with people who acted like this in my life. And like, and I remember thinking like, yeah, it's, it's on me. You know, it's, it's my fault. Like I'm coming off too strong. I'm too desperate, whatever. But then I thought about it. I'm like, no, nah, I hang out with like super big heads at cherry every day. And they're all cool with me. Yeah. I'm like, it's just this crew of like five dudes. And then Jaws was the best. He was super cool. Like Aaron Hamoki. Super Hamoki, nice. Nigga. I did super, like nice. He was super nice. So we, went, we ended up going to his house and on a trip and he was super nice. But man, by the time I got to his house, I was like a shell of a human. I'm like, uh, I'm like, fuck, I can't, hang out with these people and i remember him like trying to make me feel better he's like oh what's up man what do you do da, da, da. he was so nice and i was like well thanks dude but like i was i was beat by that point dude and I, that was one of the reasons you know there was the separation because i just could not get along with the crew um but what <laughs> would it night or somebody bro like what you looking at me for crazy because i'm complimenting you bro. yeah and like i remember even the nicest dude like a dude i shared the bed with basically in the hotel yeah. then even the nicest dude was kind of like cool guy like he was like he was talking to me but it was like you could tell he was just like all right yeah yeah, yeah. all right all right, all right. kind of like that like all right yeah i got you i got you man like trying to shut the conversation up quickly and i'm like oh like no, it's I so weird because no, like, like I, dude i go on skate trips with skaters sometimes and sometimes you're just vibing hot you're like laughing and talking and you're whatever and like that's the vibe you're going for there's no reason to be mean to somebody that's being nice to you nah exactly and i, I think a lot of it I think a lot of it, their idea is like maybe it's hazing in some way. Maybe like trying to be like, all right, this new kid's trying to come into this thing. We were, it doesn't matter. It's an ego thing with them. Bro. Yeah. The skate industry, bro. Yeah. So so I hate the idea that in skating too, they always tell you like, they're like, hey man, just be quiet. And I'm like, what's up with that? Like, like so no, I don't know. Like I'm like in every other industry, you you do the thing so you can build a community and you're trying to tell me that I can't talk. Like I this shouldn't be like a, a frat thing I'm joining or whatever. Like I need hazing or whatever. It just seemed weird. I was like, this is not the skating that I grew up with. This is not the skating that I know. Um anyways, but what was that? What were we talking about before? Uh, revive, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, dude, I'm terrible at this. No, you're great. What the hell I'm are you terrible. talking about? Yeah, yeah. You put it in detail. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, hand. sorry. So when I was hanging out with Nigel a bunch one day, he was like, Hey, I have a couple friends from Cincinnati coming into town. One's name is Andy Schrock. Sam Tabor, your mom, and then uh, Aaron Cairo. So I just had to throw that in there. I, don't know why. I, I, I was trying to think of the next name, and then I just said your mom as a placeholder. Um, so uh, so we, we meet up. So I was just like, oh, whatever. That sounds cool. But like when he mentioned them, I looked at their YouTube channels, and I'm like, e this is wild. Like I was like, I like I saw Andy Shrug vlog, and he's like, YouTube, da, 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 da. He's like screaming at the camera, and I'm like, whoa, this is like a whole – like people thought Nigel was bad. I'm yeah. like Nigel's like tamed compared to everything else I'm but I saying. Love that they owned up to it. They didn't give a fuck. That's the thing. They they grew up watching like Jackass and stuff, so they were like implementing, yeah. like, normal culture into skating, and they were great. Like Andy Shrug is so good on camera. So is Sam. Like they're natural born entertainers. Like they're good at this stuff. So to me, I've never seen like people who are so comfortable with themselves coming from a crew with the coolest guys in the world. Like Birdhouse were the coolest dudes. Like yeah, I don't give a fuck, whatever. Until like these people on camera being like, "Hi guys, I'm doing this today. Today we're gonna throw a dart at a skateboard or whatever." Yeah. I'm like, 
these guys actually seem kind of nice. So then I met Andy and Sam, and I'm used to going into these skate crews being like, hey, what's up? You know, you got to be casual. You got to not talk too much. But then these dudes are like, yo, it's so great to meet you. They're shaking my hand. Oh, dude, that was, I'd land a trick. They'd be like, yo, that's crazy. Did you ever feel like what that person felt towards you? Did you feel that way with him at all? Like how he was like, Looking at you crazy. Oh, like, dude, I ever felt like I was kind of cool guy than someone else? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So when I was growing up, yeah. So that, that's the thing. Maybe it's just instant karma. But like when I was growing up in Columbia, I remember I was such a hard ass with like, we need to do this. We need to film. We need to take this seriously. That like, I remember some kid came at me later and he was like, yo, I remember one time you like yelled at me for getting in your way or some shit. And I'm like, oh, like. That's some Kevin Bradley shit. It's like always yelling at people. At the really? Place. I've seen that nigga scream at people. Damn, he's got he didn't land a trick. <laughs> that's crazy. He's got like the opposite vibe on on that's, the podcast. That's that, I saw. Bit, that's that minute shit. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I yeah yeah. So I was uh. So they were super nice, and I immediately was just like, I really like these guys. I met Aaron Cairo too, and me and Aaron like me and Aaron always got along so well. Like I don't know why, but like we just like we have a similar idea about like. Uh, whatever existence i guess in general but like we're also both scientology no i'm just kidding i'm not uh, <laughs> just kidding, okay. i thought it'd be funny if i just like tried to do that and leave it in there like yeah we're both scientologists anyways but yeah he also no nah, nah. um oh, but yeah i did it's funny because i did talk to him and uh lance about it later on and um i had a funny story about lance being like i was like yeah sure like i was like hook me up with a book and I'll, I'll read about it you know i'm not into it but i'll read about it no. and he was like cool man yeah yeah that'll be five bucks and i'm like Bro, you're trying to get me into it. <laughs> like, give it for like. free if you're trying to get me into this thing. But anyways, yeah, I mean, I think. Like, give me this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I met all of them and we got along super well. Like, we were like really good friends. And um, and I remember right after that, I'm like, yo, I want to get on his wheel company. Because they were kind of saying like, if you're trying to do YouTube and you're riding for force, that's going to give you the biggest bump ever in YouTube. But also like, I was like, they're also the coolest people. And that was like literally right when YouTube started as well. So like mm. Revive and YouTube was like simultaneous. So with the the force like wheels. The yeah. And I made this really cringy video. I was like, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to be a YouTuber. So I made a video of me like doing this whole bit with getting on force wheels, opening the box and be like, oh my gosh, what's this? Da, da, da. I, I forgot what I did, but it was like this really cringy video. And it's funny because the top comment, he posted on his channel and the top comment is just like, this dude has the most punchable face I've ever seen. <laughs> I oh talk about me. <laughs> like, what's up with his big ass teeth? And I'm like, oh man. Like, Why can't this exist? Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, it's my fault for going super into the cringe territory, but I was down. Like I was like, man. I was so beat by skating cool guy nature that when I was started like acting kind of dorky, I was stoked. Like I was like, yo, this feels like something like fun and different. And, like I'm like, it felt like I was rebelling against this like innate cool guy shit that skating does. And it felt really good to be like corny. You know, I actually liked being corny. Like I'm like, this is fun. I'm like being silly on camera. You didn't have, you wasn't caring, bro. People weren't judging you like, in a circle. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, no. They, they, good versus bro, I got to jump off this big ass stair set and these rails and i'm not even comfortable with these people i'm not even hyped yeah versus and like why are they getting mad at me for smiling yeah, like you know fuck. youtube you can be all corny but those dudes are like hey did you smile keep that hey yeah yo, no. low key low key they got mad at me for not fucking smiling i always looking mad like bro they can't make up their damn mind <laughs> who's that skate industry mm. when i'll be around people bro you They're know like, what oh he's an asshole i'm like bro i'm just in my in, inside i'm feeling scared i'm like i'm around all these people and shit i don't know what to do you know what's crazy though? It's 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 weird because like nowadays, um, I don't know why, but with with skate industry, like when I think of like, because I think when I was doing YouTube, it was easy to be like YouTube versus skate industry, but nowadays I think there's like almost like three or four or five different camps. Like I only see like like skate industry. Like if you think of Jim Thebo, who runs Deluxe Distribution, which is like real skateboards, that's the nicest dude in the world. Messages me all the time, calls me all the time. And then there's Paul Schmidt. He runs. He basically makes all the skateboards we skate nicest dude in the world and i'm like when it comes to the actual industry all those dudes fuck with me yeah, like yeah. they like the actual industry all love me and i'm like and weirdly when i get hate it's like some youtuber who's like making some video clowning on me and i'm like but i mean like also you know this is a core side of skateboarding that talk shit behind scenes it's, that's they the do thing, it's dumb behind shit scenes, yeah, yeah. Like, you know it's politics I, I, and I and i think the core thing is almost different like the industry mm. is cool with us the youtube is up and down honestly i i feel like i get more hate from youtube than anyone else but then there is like the there's just like people who are fans of skating or something who get like really cool guy and really like it should be this way and basically like um they're kind of like old heads, but there's also like kids who are like that too. And they basically just think any any facet of like showing yourself is like lame, which I get. Like even when I was a kid, I thought like someone would post a skate club of themselves and I'm like, why are you posting yourself? That's weird. I literally thought that was weird when someone first did it. And then I'm like, 
what am I doing? I never it? understood that. I was like, bro, how the fuck are we supposed to get on? Um, I was gonna ask you, why did you? Why do you think that you? Um, you just said it right now. Why do you think you get the most hate out of all the YouTube skaters? Do you think I do? You just said that. Hmm. Do you, you just said that. Do you that? think I do? Do oh, you asking me now? Yeah. yeah. Do uh, you actually think I do? Who do you think gets the most hate out of all the skate YouTubers? YouTubers, shit. I don't know. He thinks, I mean, he thinks it's me. I can tell. No, nah, because I'm thinking about like uh, Andy. Uh, and uh, I feel like Andy. People kind of know he's. Yeah, I think I exist so weirdly in both worlds that it's easy to. He gets the most hate. That's a good question, huh? Damn, is it me? Who There's gets, no way. Hey, y'all comment below. Who gets the most hate? Yeah, because I don't. I, I really skaters. don't see it all. But I did see a YouTube video called like the most hated skaters on YouTube, and I was one of them. Was it that one weird ass nigga talking about it? I think I reviewed it. Yeah, and every yeah yeah. So you reviewed it, Brian Arnett. Right. I mean, everyone who reviewed it, even the comments, conned on him. Like that people were not. Hilarious. People were not. Like, what is you doing? Because <laughs> I think I think the funniest thing he said was he was like about me he didn't say anything mean honestly he just said uh he was like he's like yeah so john hill is always positive and yeah. people see that as a problem and <laughs> i remember like a and i remember thinking like <laughs> i i don't know that to me tripped me out because i'm just like okay here's the thing like because people associate being mean with being truthful right, right. they're like oh if, if you're mean you're telling the truth but it's like well youtube pays you more for being mean so you actually have more incentive to be negative oh. They pay you more for being so I'm like, so if you want to talk about honesty, it's like to me when I see people who are being nice, sometimes I think they're being being more honest because it's like because they don't get a clickbait title out of being like, I love this skater. But if you're like, ah, this skater's kind of whack, that's gonna get ten times more views, you know? I don't know. But so you said earlier though that you felt like you get the most hate. Why do you feel that way? I don't did I say that? You did. Okay, so, okay. Unless so, I'm tripping. Unless okay, I'm tripping. Maybe I said I get hate in general or something. Um man, I th Okay, if I said that, <laughs> I don't Did remember. you say that back there? I'm not tripping. <laughs> we, we go rewind that. All right, that's fine. So, um, <laughs> how, about, how, about we, how about this? Why do I get hate? Or why do we get hate or whatever? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just the weird mixture of like traditional and non-traditional. I think it's, it's being like, I mean, honestly, I don't really know. And I like the fact that I don't really know. I don't want to be too observant and be like, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing right. Because I feel like I could go deep into myself and be like, this is why you're a piece of shit. And this is why you... So to me, I, I try not to think about that stuff at all. And I actually don't see hate a lot now, but I do run into people. I ran into this dude at a skate park. It's funny because he was like clowning on me to my... Like he was talking shit about me and my friend heard him talking shit. And I didn't know that. So I went up and I'm like, yo, what up? And he's like, what up, dog? Gave me a big dap. was super nice. And I never thought about it. So like I, every time I approached that kid, I was like, yo, what up? It's good to see you again. He's super nice to me. So to me, I was like, I kind of don't care that he was hating, whatever, he's nice yeah. afterwards, whatever. Um, but when we were talking one day, he was like, yeah, why do you get so much hate, bro? And I'm like, I do? <laughs> like, people, yeah, those questions too. people always, like, <laughs> almost got to remind me, like, how do you do it? And I'm like, you know, I, I honestly do not see it a lot. Like on my own channel, the thing is, I don't see it a lot, but maybe I'm used to the amount I'm seeing it because there's probably one or two in everything I post. One or two, like you know like this sucks you suck or whatever and i'm like maybe that is a lot but it feels like it's only one or two per post of anything and i guess people aren't used to seeing any right like at all i think it's the consistency if there's anything and that's a positive thing bro like i was telling you earlier you consistent so that means you're killing it and i remember at a time i think it was me and Luis or people in that house around that time we saw you going in we're like yo we need to figure out what the fuck he doing bro because your I, shit was going crazy i think luis told me that and i remember being like <laughs> nah you're good like luis is gonna figure out and he yeah, did of course right. and i honestly with youtube i'm like uh, with youtube now dude it, it's a completely different thing where if you make a good video or i shouldn't say that but like you i don't know before it was weird it was like i was telling you this before i'll mention a little bit like you do if you do 10 videos in a row one video bombs the next six videos if they're all great it slowly builds back up nowadays you have a video that bombs your next video could crush like if it's a good video or whatever or if it's a video that your audience wants to see so with me it was like you know the reason i've been not about youtube recently first of all we've been doing this for eight years or whatever and i think people like us are just excited about doing new shit all the time like yeah. And like people make us feel bad too because they're like, dude, you got this great job, you got this great gig. Dude, my response is like, I don't care. I don't want to do it. Like, I don't know. Like, I, spoiled or not, like, it's like, I liked, I did YouTube because I didn't need to do YouTube at the time either. I did it because it was fun. It's, it was exciting. It was crazy. And then I tried it and it worked. And now I, I want to chase that high again. Like, I want something else that makes me feel like that, you know? I feel you guys talking about the music. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, like, I mean, it's funny that you say that because 
when you were doing music, I felt like Lamont was getting the most hate out of anyone. I was just like, yeah. damn. <laughs> and like, I remember like, yeah. And, and it's funny because I was telling him this earlier too. I was like, YouTube skaters were gassing him up like crazy. Like he, he would put out a song, Chris Chan, me, Dale, get it. We're all like, all, you know, because we're living vicariously through this guy who could actually break out. But every comment under us was like, the fuck, dude, <laughs> stick to skating. Ruining your, your kid's life. People would say that. Oh my uh, god! Niggas are saying crazy shit. Uh, like, that's wow. why you don't put the kids in the things, right? Because yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of things, bro. <laughs> yeah, but then like, yeah. So like, you know, years later, we're still like, yo, get it. We're still, but all of us wanted to try something else. I think Chris Chan's probably into like more modeling and and probably making like artsier type of shit. And I think that's great. You, should, you know, do that or whatever. And he tries to do it, but it's like that skateboarding thing pulls you in because that's what people know you for, and you feel like you're being a jerk to the audience. Like you're like, damn, you're right. I should have. I, I should be nicer with your feelings. I don't know, but you're like, but then I've already made a thousand videos. Just watch the, you know, they, they're there. And for me, though, I was trying to run away from the, um, cause it's two different worlds with the music and skating. People weren't taking me serious as a rapper. And I was trying to get good, mm -hmm. but they wasn't taking me serious too because, um, they're like, oh, he's on the internet. Cause it was like a whole different side mm -hmm. at that time, especially. It still is a little bit, but especially at that time, like, Oh, you're a YouTuber, you're trying to do all this other shit, but you're trying to be a rapper, you can't do that. And then on skateboarding, it's like, you're trying to be a rapper, but you a skater. I feel like music. Man. I was alone. Yeah. <laughs> I was alone. I was like, nobody can get this. Yeah, and you're like, hopefully my audience, the people have, <laughs> my ride or dies will be with me, and they're like flipping immediately. They're like, nah, you suck. And that was one thing I learned too, is the, <laughs> the internet goes like that. It's like people who are commenting, like, dude, it was crazy. I saw this, um, I saw this comment that was basically like, you're a fucking f word or whatever yeah. in my dms and i'm like yo and then i look at his previous comment and it was like you're the goat literally right before they said you're the goat and then like two years later something i did made must have betrayed him or something or maybe i switched up just a fan bro. yeah it's but but that's what I'm, but that's what i'm saying i'm like yeah it's like you can't i mean you can't live your life according to people even if people are being there rooting for you and whatever it's like you have you have to live your life the way you were going to live your life if you didn't have an audience too. So if you get over something, it's like what you want me to live depressingly in this thing in this world forever because my audience likes it. It's like, plus they're going to get bored. I mean, they they want to think they're not. They want to keep seeing the same skate shit forever. But it's like, you're going to be excited one day when you when you see a music video that's popping off on Instagram. And you're like, whoa, oh that's Lamont. Oh shit, and it's like popping off, right? Exactly. And if you see something of me doing something different, you're going to be like, oh that's so cool. He's like he's good at two things. That's awesome. Exactly. But that building process is hard because we're basically building from scratch in front of people, which is tough. It's like getting on stage and be like, all right, guys, now I'm going to learn how to draw. I'm going to learn how to create music. Like we were saying earlier, bro, people had to watch me like learn how to get good. Watch you be whack. Whack as fuck. Watch him whack off. It was crazy, off, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, some Sean Rodriguez shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, I want to ask He's you this. Him, huh? What was your beef with Chris? Oh yeah. yeah, dude, hundred thousand percent my fault. I'm not just saying that to be the nice guy. Hundred thousand. I was watching a video earlier. I was like, let me look at some shit. I was like, oh, I forgot they had. No, nah, that was a hundred percent my fault. I feel so bad. And he, he, I don't think he ever got over it. To be honest, I mean, he did, but he didn't. Um, yeah, dude, I feel so bad about this. So this was like, I, you know, as we were saying earlier, I was saying like, yeah, yeah. There's some people I would be the cool guy. I did that to him. I got on YouTube and I'm like making these corny ass videos, and all of a sudden he does a brand deal with Axe, and uh, I'm like. And like, I, I'm on my Instagram and I'm swiping. I'm like, okay, I'm like Axe brand deal. This kid uh, that I was following, I'm like, oh, TJ. Oh, I scroll again, Josh Katz. Oh, Axe. I scroll again, Chris Chan. And I was just like, what the fuck? Why is there three Axe brand deals in a row on my feed? And I, and yeah, I was like, budget. yeah, and I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, this is so corny. I remember thinking like, this is so corny. It's skating. And, and like, you know, honestly, the ads were kind of silly because they were like, you know, it helps me be a better skater. Ax <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, and so... It's like, I don't, I don't think Chris did that. I mean, that, that was, it was, it was how we all do brand deals. You know, it was the normal thing, but as a skater who wasn't used to brand deals, I was like, what is this shit? So like, I'm already, so I had no place to talk. I'm already doing YouTube and all this corny stuff. And I'm sitting there going like, I want to make fun of this. So I did a parody mu video of doing an Axe brand deal. So I'm like, hi guys, like, did your wife leave you? Well, here's Axe brand deal. Like I did this whole bit and I'm like, it's going to save your marriage. Like I did this whole corny thing, but I, I did it because I thought it was funny. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, they're going to laugh. And I, I was like, they're going to think this is so funny. So I uploaded this video and like Josh Katz, of course, because Josh Katz is an asshole. So he saw it and he went, Yo, that's hilarious. So he was vibing with it. He's like, yo, that's funny. Um, Chris was not that way. Yeah, he, uh -huh. he was well, not into it. You know? No response to me, but through the grapevine, I'm like, I, I was still hitting up Chris like, yo, we're YouTubers, let's skate. And I, I think I sent him the video and I was like, yo, how funny is this, right? Because to me, it was like, we grew up talking shit or whatever. And I'm like, yo, how funny is this? 
no response. I'm like, oh, that's weird. He doesn't think it's funny. Anyways, he did not think it was funny, obviously, because I think he, he was like, he felt really uncomfortable doing a brand deal because, you know, whatever. But that's how you make a living on YouTube. So he had to do it. And then he was like, you know, whatever. It, it, there was nothing wrong. It was a great ad. He yeah. killed it. But I clowned on him. He wasn't having it. And then for like a year, I'm like, why is Chris never fucking with me? I don't get this. I literally didn't get it. And I, I would hit up people like Dale and everybody else became friends with him. And I'm like, why is everybody else hanging out with him? And I'm not. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, we're both Asian. We should hang out. No, I'm just kidding. But I was like, yeah, I was just like, let's hang out. And then I think Spencer Barton was the first one to be like, bro, he doesn't like you. And I'm like, what? <laughs> And I'm like, he's like, yeah, dude. And then I talked to someone else and I'm like, yeah, he doesn't like you, man. And I'm like, well, what did I do? Because I, I grew up watching, because <laughs> when I got into YouTube, I watched Chris Chan and Andy Schrock and all of them. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. no. And then um, I found out later on that, yeah, I mean, of course he saw the video and he was tripping. He was just like, all right, yeah, I'm good. I'm over this dude, you know? And I got to give Chris props because I actually back that he was like, I don't care that John is getting these views or whatever. This kid's an asshole. I'm not, I'm not with him. And I actually think that's cool. Like part of me is like, yeah, at least he like stood for his ground. It wasn't like, well, now that John's blowing up, I'll work with him, even though I don't like him and he's an asshole. Like, I think people in YouTube can be so fair weather. They can be like, you know, like certain people will hate on us like crazy. I'm not kicking it with that dude. You know what I mean? Like, like in my opinion, I think Chris did the right thing by not kicking it with the guy who was a dick. Um, and then later on, you know, we we sort of we got we became friends. We we talked. We texted, things were good. And I remember like when I got in Battle of the Barracks, he FaceTimed me and I'm like, yo, what's up, Chris? And like, every time I talk to him, I'm nervous. So I'm just like, hopefully he doesn't hate me. And I'm like, hey, go off on you, yeah, yeah, I'm like, hey, Chris, how are you? And uh, he was like, bro, you're going to win this thing. Da, da, da. I said all this nice stuff. And I'm like, I'm not even skating it. So this whole Battle of the Barracks thing kind of became this whole dramatic thing as well. I want to ask about that. Okay, yeah, super dramatic. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I'm not even skating. Chris was like, dude, I thought you were going to win. Da, da, da. We were all good. And then. Later on, I'm watching the Red Bull video about YouTube skaters, and he brings up the story. He's like, yeah, this one YouTuber did this thing to me, and I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, he's still mad. And then he brought it up on another video. Um, oh, the Nine Club interview. He brings it up, and I was just like, oh. Like, I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Part of me, like, respects the fact that, like, after all these years, he's just like, you know what, John? Fuck that. That was lame. And he's right. It was lame. But he told Dale recently, he's like, does John think I don't like him? Because I'm cool with him. And I'm like. Well, I talked to him before I came over here. Um, <laughs> okay. So, okay. So he's not going there. No, 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 no. I'll tell you. So um, All right. he said, first thing he said, no, I'll fuck with John. Cool. Hey, you fuck with you tough. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I was asking about the whole, the little rebuttal he did in his, um, his vlog video of his dad sleeping to your video. You remember that? I saw that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my videos were boring. I hit a good point. No, but no, but he said, he told me, he was like, yo, that was like, because his dad falls asleep all the time. He said that wasn't a skit, wasn't planned. He called his dad, like, sleeping on his videos and our videos all the time. He was like, yo, this is perfect right now. Like, it was just, like, a coincidence. Oh, like, his dad was just legitimately gosh. watching your video because he, like, likes all of our shit. Dude, <laughs> it's funny because I saw that and I didn't even think anything of it. I just thought, oh, that's funny. His dad's watching my video. Yeah, nah, nah, I'm not nah. smart enough to be like, oh, he burned my ass. I literally was just like, oh, that's cool. He's watching my video. Nah, that was supposed to be a little, a diss, uh, but it's like, damn. You know, friendly diss or whatever. But yeah. it wasn't like actually set up to come at you. He was just like, I might as well take advantage of this. And his dad wasn't, he was actually watching a video. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, straight up though, that that's like a good example of like, yeah, I mean, I, I in that situation, I was completely uncool. I did some shit that I shouldn't have done. And then it like, he reacted how a normal human should react of being yeah, like, yeah, well, fuck you then. And I was like, oh, he was huh. saying a lot of positive things about you on the phone. I mean, he's you guys are straight. Trust I know me. it sounds corny, but like <laughs> after all what I just said, but Chris is actually fantastic. Yeah, he's yeah, really yeah. I mean, he's really, really good at what he does. He's on. I don't know how he's so good at skating for someone who feels like he wants to get out of it. I'm like, how are you still getting so good at skating? And obviously he's like handsome and shit. So his modeling stuff's going to work well. <laughs> so nation, nation, Yeah. Nation. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he—he like he is killing it with modeling. He's killing it, yeah. That's good. Cool, I think I saw him on a billboard. I don't know if it was him, but if yeah. if I did, I wouldn't be surprised. In the malls all the time too. Chris? Yeah, he was always in the malls. His face was just there on. Are Tilly's. you serious? Yeah, on like the windows of Tilly's. I think I saw him. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Okay, so yeah, he's good. <laughs> nah, that's no, nah, y'all straight. Um, it's my best friend. So you lived in a lot of a lot of places. I did. Yeah. What were all the places you lived in? Oh, like in California? Oh, oh just, um, you, starting off life. New York and all that other shit. South Carolina. Okay. Texas. Okay. Back to South Carolina. Okay. California. New York City. Cincinnati. Damn. California. Like four different cities within California. Uh, but that's about that's about it. I was at military kids. So we moved, oh, Germany for five years. 
So when I was a kid, I was actually born in Colombia. We immediately went to Germany for five years. Damn. Yeah, and then came back here. And then we went to like, we basically lived on military bases for a while. Then when we first got to South Carolina, it was like um, we were trying to find our footing. So we were living in like random ass places like this one trailer park place that was just like tiny and busted. Damn. We lived in my aunt's at attic for a bit this is like five of us too oh my god um and then yeah then we ended up in our house and we couldn't afford it but we did it and it was a, a struggle because houses are houses are expensive man even then they were expensive and now they're just like un unlivable unpayable. you feel like people don't uh, people like underestimate you about like what you went through because you're so positive uh i don't know yeah i think that's the thing it's like i think you can always think of any situation as positive or negative like to me i i, I literally look at all the i think if you had if you were if i was feeling really bad for myself one day i could go back and be like damn damn this happened <laughs> you know whatever but to me like i i see genuinely i see the good in pretty much any of those situations like pretty much all of them like like okay living in my aunt's attic yeah you look at that situation you go that's tough but i remember when i was a kid i was having fun like we we're i was like oh we're cuddled up with the family like we got family and i remember she had stairs and we put pillows down and we were like sliding down these stairs like that's the thing like the truth of the matter was i actually didn't struggle living in there i had a good time the trailer park i remember so many good things about it like i remember like the vent in the floor coming up and it was heat and i would sit over as a little kid and have my shirt over i'm like yo this is so warm and nice and like i don't know like all the tough that's things amazing, bro. always i mean they always led to like like, you know, when I was, so basically when my dad got his job and, and the parents started having to like go on their own way and we had to be alone or whatever. Like, even then I remember being like, I was stressed. Like when they, when they were initially not there, I remember being like, I'm actually pretty relieved. Like that, it was stressful dealing with like military ass father and really strict Korean mother. So people look at that and they might go like, oh, that's kind of messed up. You know, your parents, they should have been there the whole, you know, whatever. And I'm like, no, like it actually, for me, was a relief. My brother was a hothead. So it was good that he had some time to himself and like, yeah, I mean, but yeah, maybe maybe a little bit, you know. But I really do see all those bad things as like, yeah, but I don't know. That is amazing, bro. For real, appreciate you. Would have been good in the hood, hood. Mm, oh yeah, <laughs> extra positive. All right, I want to ask you this: you wasn't really a part of Braille, right? No, but I was in a bunch of their videos in the okay. beginning. Yeah, yeah. So Revive mainly. What are your top? Who are the top three best skaters on Revive? On Revive? Yeah, besides you. Besides me, I was going to say, oh, fuck, I was literally going to say me, me, and me, but <laughs> if I got to say top three, uh, uh, Johnny, I would say maybe Johnny Geiger, he's good. He's pretty good. Oh, I forgot about that. Nigga. He's a pretty good dude. Um, he is number one. He is good. Yeah. He can do tricks. Um, maybe, I don't know. I like Jason Park. Um, I just like how silly he is. Oh, Sam Vestal. Sam Vessel's super underrated. Oh, Sam. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I, think yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he actually might be the best, but I think people... He skates the way that I grew up liking. Like, he's fast, and he does, like, really switch big spin board sizes and rails down back to switch, whatever. He's really, really, really good and very underrated because he's got his own life and shit going on. He lives in Kentucky, and nobody... He can't even hang out with Revive now. He lives so far away. But probably Sam Vestal. So Sam Vestal... Ah, forgetting someone, I know. So versus... Honestly, probably Sam Vestal. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'd say yeah, yeah. Oh, I think shit. Sam's. I I mean, Sam's my type of skater, okay. fast and and he's like he does really hard tricks aggressively, which I like. I like fast, like bam, bam, bam. Uh, Johnny is amazing, but he's more of like a technical. Like he looks like he's like solving math problems. He's like he's an alien. He's an alien. Yeah, he's an alien. Um, I don't know. I I like I like Jason Park's creativity, but I I feel like if I had a list in front of me, I'd be able to do it better. But like, I think that's a good. Who else is on? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, f I forgot they was on Revive too. Yeah. Uh, Tony Hawk. He's up there. Totally hot. Yeah, okay, yeah. so barracks. Go back to the barracks things. Why yeah, didn't yeah. you enter the battle of the barracks? That was such a stressful situation, dude. And we're going to wrap up the podcast soon because I know you're talking Okay, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. so stressful. So that was right during COVID. I mean, everybody's brain's basically split in half. Like, to me, COVID was the perfect example of what humans can go through and, and be fine. Like, if you would have told me before COVID, like, yeah, the world's going to shut down and nobody's going to be able to do shit, I'd been like, oh, we're going to eat each other. Like, humans can't deal with that. We're Humans are terrible. Dude. And right when it started, I was, like, really impressed with how people were kind of reacting to it. I know the world had different opinions, but I was like, yo, we're kind of killing it. Like, humans are like, you know, they're doing what they need to do to get by, and we're stuck inside, and we're skaters, which is tough. But we're making it happen. But I was still stressed. And then all of a sudden, uh, as it was closing down a little bit, Steve Barrow was like, we're doing Battle of the Barracks. And I'm like, and I'm living in Texas at the time. And I'm just like, oh, dude, I, I haven't healed that much. Like, I'm like, I'm still pretty stressed and, and yeah. anxious about this whole thing. So he, 
a long time ago, I asked if I could be in Battle of the Barracks, like two years before that. So I think he just took that and thought like, all right, well, screw it. He wants to be in Battle of the Barracks. But he asked a bunch of people. A lot of people said no. Damn. A lot of people didn't react. And then all of a sudden, there's this video that pops up on the barracks. And it's like, here's the next bracket for Battle of the Barracks. And I'm like, yo, that's my name. And then I'm like, yo, that's Andy Schrock. Yo, that's, and it was a bunch of my homies. And then I texted all of them and they're all like, yeah, we said no. I don't know why her names are on there. I think he just, I don't know. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, a lot of people got a lot of crazy shit to say about him. Like the dude you had on your podcast. Oh my God. A that, people saying a lot of shit about Steve uh, Barron. Yeah, they yeah. probably hate me. I think, like, <laughs> you, you, I think like universally, yeah, a lot of people have. It's because he's, I, I think the way, the vibe that I got from him is he feels he's going to resent this. He feels a lot like a Silicon Valley, like business bro. Like he's like, like the thing with a lot of business people, they can't afford to do shit. They just do it. And then they expect, and they, they think that a lot of people should kind of help them without pay or whatever. And like in your homie's case, what's his name again? Who did the interview with you and talked a lot about working uh, with Steve Barra? The hyphen it. What is it? The hyphen it. Oh, the hyphen it. Yeah. yeah. Which thought I said, I thought it was one word, like dive in it. <laughs> yeah. The so hyphenate. the hyphen it. Yeah. So the hyphen it, the good homie, the hyphen it. He, like his story, it was just like, that's a perfect example, right? He did all this stuff for Steve Barry, helped him as much as he possibly could. And at the end of the day, Steve Barry was like too busy, focused on a hundred different things, kind of neglected him. And that's why the hyphen it got screwed over is because he was dealing with someone who was too focused on too many different things. And that's all it was. Like, so, so when he posted that, I was kind of just thinking like, he just, he maybe he lost track or whatever and then i yeah I have four homies being like i don't want to be in it like what the hell i'm not going to be in it because like people were still stressed about covid that's the only reason like if we to were say you don't want to be in a battle of bags it's crazy too I, I was living in texas i was stressed and i knew like okay so i fly to california i win one i come home i fly back to california i went you know whatever it's like if i do well i'm flying to california four times and i didn't want to leave my house like I, at this point i'm like so like i was pretty depressed and anxious at the time like everyone was I was just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not dipping out of here. Um, so I texted him and was just like, hey, man, I'm not going to skate it. Like, sorry. And I think that was the reason there was like a little bit of beef is because his response was not pleasant. Like, Wait, I had beef? It wasn't beef. It was just like he just didn't respond in the way that that any human should. He he talked like a business guy. He's like, right, right. like I was basically like, I've been too stressed out. Da, da, da. And he's like, basically, like, don't give me that. You know, like, nah. And he sent me this like huge threat like this is why you're gonna skate it you know what yeah, i mean but is he gonna pay for flights that's the thing no you know what i'm saying it's yeah like, yeah, is he yeah. Paying for all this what the fuck you mean I, that's <laughs> the thing and i think in his head he just thought like i'm just trying to i'm trying to build john up and make him want to do this thing and i was i was not having it at the time so i kind of responded pretty negatively like i'm like no like da, 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 da. i said whatever and then we kind of did go back and forth like in a negative way where it was just like it was like i'm not skating a dude and him being like yo get over it you know or whatever like and i'm like I don't know. I, I think when people say like, fuck, fuck your feelings, do this thing, it, you know, that was the context of what I was getting. I was just like, Ugh. so we kind of had a little thing. And then we ended up like a few weeks later, I was just like, Hey man, are we good? You know, he's like, yeah, we're good. Whatever. It was all cool. That's cool. But then you find out later that like, he kind of dealt with that with a lot of people. Like it was like me, I dipped out Andy Schrock, June Saito, Dylan Jeb. Um, basically like, and it's funny cause uh, that's Dylan's business, but it was funny cause he, <laughs> <laughs> Dylan's awesome and this is why I want to say this because it just shows how awesome he is um, he's the kid on Primitive Dylan Jeb you know he's like he had the last part in the newest AM video oh yeah 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 He's that amazing. Crazy, oh my bro. God. He's so good. But he, he the reason I, I was just like, oh, I love this kid is one, he sent in the sponsor me video to progress daily way back when. And I was like, oh, this kid's sick. And he's always fuck with YouTubers. He's like the guy who yeah. watches YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah. He he like loves us. And then uh and then like, or at least he did. I think he still does. But <laughs> when he uh when he got in there, the guy he was facing like sent him a message and was just like, bro, we about to fucking go, let's go, or something like that. And he was just like he like sent me the message. He's like, "Yeah, I'm out." Like he's like, I'm not, <laughs> "Like I'm not a I'm not a football player. Like I'm not trying to go in this competing or whatever." Like because he he's just a kid who skates. He's already getting all this love. What does he need to like challenge people for? You know, and that's me too. I I really don't like competition in skating. I think it's corny. Like I think a lot of things are corny. But like I'm not trying to compete against anyone. Like I'm just trying to like. Damn, I don't. I, I know I said I was gonna end it, but I want to ask you another question. Yeah, yeah. Do you think there needs to be more aggressiveness and more of that like? boxing type of ufc or I think football it, type of competition in skateboarding i, I think it nice? is kind of getting up there a little bit i mean I, I think it depends on what you're trying to i mean maybe if you want skateboarding to have more money in it maybe yeah honestly that'd probably be best but personally i 
like I'm just not into that kind of stuff. I'm really not into competition in general. Like I didn't grow up watching sports or anything. I was always just like the skater and I was like, fuck sports, man. I'm just skating. Yes, and then as I got older, I kind of like, I, I appreciated it more, but like, you know, with, with me, like this sounds really weird and maybe woke ish, but when like, I see like the skaters of street league holding up their country flags and stuff. I don't know, man. It makes me feel funny. Like I'm like, <laughs> it makes, I'm like, I feel like I'm watching a football game. Niggas can't represent their country. That's the thing. <laughs> I don't know why I think it's so weird, dude. It's I, funny as hell. <laughs> cause I, cause I remember like, oh, God, this is going to sound so woke. But like, I remember I saw this Japanese MMA fighter beat some dude's ass <laughs> and then he holds up a flag and it's every country's flag. And it says, we are all one. And I remember being like, yeah. Like, I, like on some hippie shit. I'm like, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the thing. And like, I think, I think the idea of like, to me, honestly, holding up an American flag, I think the reason I'd be like, oh, that's kind of corny is because like, man, I've gotten in trouble a thousand times for skating in America, like by all these business owners. I mean, the, the way that America works fundamentally has not been super beneficial to me or my family. That, yeah, that's a good point. So I'm, <laughs> I, so point. I'm like, I'm like America. Like when I win, no, like to me, I want to hold up a mirror and be like me. me like yeah. I'm the one. Yeah, exactly. Like or just be like everyone. You know, all the homies. Like to me, I would just hold up blue tile. Mm -hmm. Like I'd be like blue tile skate shop. This is the mm -hmm. like unless you know maybe because Japan, you know, they're always winning, so they're always holding up the flags. I'm like, it's, it's always winning. yeah. Well, maybe they feel like their country helped them. Yeah, maybe they did. You know, but to me. As weird as it sounds, like I had freedom in America and all this stuff, and America's great. I love America. But, like, that's not my first thought when I'm winning. And plus, I think it creates kind of a separation. It's like America versus Japan instead of like, you know, Sora versus Brayden or whatever. It's that's like, exactly what you mean. I, I like that idea of just being like individuals facing, but they're all friends, whatever. Not country versus country because that's what leads to the weird things. Yeah. But I don't know. And here's the last question if there's one six day. Inches. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh -huh. Not the, no, I said six inches. I thought you were going to ask something else, but yeah. Right, what go. the fuck? No, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Pause nation, <laughs> pause nation. Pause, pause, pause. Uh, Are you saying pause nation? Yeah, pause nation. Like that. That's like the yeah, ultimate. Cool. Nice. That's not the ultimate. It's pause nation plus tax. That's the ultimate. Got it. Right. If you had one thing you could change about the skate industry, what would it be? Oh, that's tough. I. It's funny. It's you ask other people this question. I've never actually like delved deep into it. One thing. Ah, oh, man, I don't know. I mean, as weird as it sounds, I wish you could make a living skating. That's it. But I don't know how you get that done. Because, like, I wish... Ah, dude, it's tough. Because, like, all right, if you up the prices of boards, you're getting a different audience into skateboarding. You're getting rich kids. Only rich kids, right? If you make boards $100 a deck, you're only getting rich kids into skating. And it becomes more like a snowboarding thing where you're basically alienating so much of the community. And that's why there's so many skateboarders because it's so accessible. Exactly. But then the companies would actually be able to make money. Like the only thing that would help skating is if they sold more expensive shit. And that, that's it. Then skateboarding would have money in it because then all the industries, you know, because like, right now board companies are making like $10 a board. You know, like that's the worst profit margin ever. You're selling a $60 board and you're making you know, 15 bucks, but then you got to sell it to the skate shop who then got to sell it. So now you're getting even less. The industry just doesn't work in general in terms of money and business. So unfortunately it's like, as kids, we're all delusional. We grow up thinking like, you got to make money, anything you do, anything you love. But that infrastructure just does not exist in skating at all. Like these people as YouTubers, you know, or a skateboarder who does modeling or whatever, they're making more money than like the people who own the companies. Yeah. Yeah. Who own like, these board companies. So, and, cause like true. I heard P Rod talking about this too. And I thought he was talking about primitive primitive is the most successful board company right now. Right? Like probably, probably like top three or the most successful. Is it, revived. Not anymore. I don't think mm. unfortunately, but, uh, he had the best, he has like the best skateboarders, best business, whatever. Da, da, da. He was in a uh, conversation with Mikey Taylor and Mikey Taylor was like, how much do pro skaters make nowadays? Like $500 to $1,000 a month or whatever. He goes, dude, 500 is good nowadays. So I'm thinking like, okay, if you're on primitive and you're making less, because that's what he insinuated. I'm like, if you're making less than 500 riding for the best board company in the world, it's just not, it's not in a good place. It's not like the career you pursue if you want to make a living. Um, it's just the thing you got to pursue if you want to have fun. But the thing is, we, we were able to make a living, you know? So it's the extra shit. Independent workers, you feel? Yeah, but that's the thing. At the end of the day, I am what people say. I am a YouTuber. Like that was the way that I made money. I happened to skate, but the YouTube was what made the money. I mean, with skateboarding, if you saw my paychecks, you know, it'd be hilarious. But uh, with YouTube, it's better, you know. But I mean, YouTube, I'm like already falling out of it. So I think I've made only four hundred dollars as a skateboarder. As a skateboarder, from like industry wise, like from who? 
I'm not going. I'm not going. Oh, okay, okay, I'm okay. Not going That's cool. Is it a big company? It's ironic. It's ironic. Primitive when it was a para. <gasps> Oh, oh, and dude! I, was, I, was, I remember yeah. being jealous seeing you and Sean Rodriguez and all these people. I'm like, yo, they're going the primitive route. That's so cool. That is ironic. They wasn't even supposed to pay me. They just slid me some money for being on the barracks for two videos, which is amazing. I appreciate, wow. Appreciate, yeah, I mean, uh, P Rod's probably going to be the one who holds it down the the right yeah. way as much as he can because I don't think P Rod's like banking off. He said he was basically still in the red with primitive. Like they're not. He they're not even making money. I he, can imagine that. Yeah, he's getting money from uh, Nike and shit. So. Yeah. Well, cool. All right, man. Eee. That's it for the podcast. We're going to do a part two in let's the future. Yeah, let's do it. A month or two from now. But uh, appreciate you. Of you course. guys comment below for the next podcast and the questions like that. All his information is in the description, YouTube channel, Instagram, whatever else you want me to put. Um, yeah. Cool. Appreciate one, you, one, man. One. Two, three, four. <laughs>